freezing, and we can use your help. See what you can do. Fitness facility Court Jester Athletic Club is excited to be open and ready to serve you during your next workout. Join in a new and improved gym experience with fitness and safety top of mind. Sports 1430. Welcome back inside the Triple Cities Family Dental pregame show. Triple Cities Family Dental makes your smile a priority. Schedule an appointment today by calling them at 607-545-4148. We want to thank Gavin for spending some time with us pregame inside the Tully's Coach's Corner. We know it's tough for him not being out there on the ice, but like he said, hopefully he's back a lot sooner than everybody thinks. Gavin is a fan favorite here in Binghamton back home for his second season with the Black Bears. And now it's time to take a look at the scratches and injury updates tonight brought to you by our friends over at the Court Gesture Athletic Club. And for the Black Bears, we'll start with Gavin Yates, who is still dealing with an upper body concern. Hopefully his timetable for return will be set sooner rather than later. Kyle Powell still out with a foot injury. He'll be behind the bench tonight acting as the defensive coach for the Black Bears. MJ Merkel is a healthy scratch tonight. Jesse Anderson out with a nose injury. He had a small procedure and coach, I can't stress small enough. He said that he was in and out of the hospital in about an hour and that must have been a record time. And hopefully Jesse will be traveling with the team to Michigan tomorrow. But he is out tonight. And also the third goalie out of the lineup will be Joe Shepard tonight. Shepard was victorious in his last start on Friday in Delaware. That's a look at the Court Gesture Athletic Club injuries and scratches. And when we come back, we'll have the opening faceoff of tonight's game. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox Sports 1430. Big up. Vision Veterans Memorial Arena, Brooks Hill and Alex Jones on the call tonight and a trio of hometown of Binghamton kids coming home for Thanksgiving break, serenading us with their rendition of the national anthem. The hat tricks have made their way out onto the ice and now we are getting set for the first period. But before we get there, we got to talk about the Thompson & Johnson Equipment Company goaltending matchup and tonight, It'll be Brian Wilson who leads the league in save percentage at 9-2-9, 6-0-1 on the year for Wilson. And he also has a goals against average of 250. His opposer, Riley McVeigh, back in between the pipes for the Black Bears. McVeigh 4-0-0 on the year. A save percentage at 9-1-7 and a goals against average of 271 on the year. And now we are ready to go 
as Wilson and McVeigh are your Thompson & Johnson Equipment Company goaltending matchup tonight, elevating your expectations. Opening faceoff is underway. And the Hattricks won the faceoff backwards, but temporarily the Blackbirds had control of the puck inside the blue line. And skating out with it now is former Black Bear Michael Marshawn, now playing on a line and a wrist shot wrapped around and it's redirected into the corner. McVeigh with a turnaround shot. Save already. Tell you what, Brooks, it's already getting chippy. Brendan Shahan gave uh, D'Angelo a little bit of business after that faceoff. And you know that's part of Dan Barry's game plan. They're going to try to outwork you with the physicality as Yuri Haida lays a big hit on a member of the Hat Tricks. The Hat Tricks try to push the puck out into the neutral zone, and it's the captain, Jake Schultz, who was not in the lineup on Friday night against the Thunder, but was playing it in the home game back out onto the ice as teams now trade opportunity. Dumping and chasing are the black and orange so far, and a little bit of a color rush going on as the Black Bears outfitted in the black jerseys for the second time at home this season and Danbury wearing their orange jerseys with black trim, white names, black numbers and white ice lines. This is not icing as it's deflected on the way through. Haido tries to backhand it across the boards, but Gonzalez will do a good job of keeping it in. Haida sends his man down to the floor, and that's a good thing that you can see the Black Bears loading up physicality wise on the defensive blue line so far. Cross corner dump in, now Ivashkin, power move to his forehand, gets it out in front, handcuffs themselves at the last possible second. Austin Thompson sends it wide. Hattrick's doing a good job of protecting the blue paint defensively, not allowing Brian Wilson to see any high danger chances just quite yet. Now skating with it is Dustin Jesso in the open corner, giving it back to the point. A wrist shot put on and steered aside by McVay. Black Bears almost let Jesso wide open on the back door, but it appears that they will skate out of harm. Jamie Boussel, first man to it, but the goalie will cover up instead. And with 17.57, we have our first pause in the action. Yeah, just so there, Brooks had a great chance to the open net. Could not glove the puck down to himself. Came in pretty hot off McVay's stick, right towards his right hand. Tried it, but of course you can't close a close fist around the puck, so he couldn't, wasn't able to corral it at the open cage. It'll be an offensive zone faceoff coming up for a Binghamton. Second line is out, Mac Lewis loses the faceoff and a two on one going the other way. A wrist shot and a save made by McVeigh. He saw it all the way on the right handed shot of Tristan Mock. Easy one for McVeigh there. Watched it all the way, great job by the defense. Closing it down, not allowing the pass. Easy glove save for McVeigh. Uh, apologies, Tristan Mock, a southpaw, a left handed shooter. But McVeigh still makes the glove save either way. Black Bears trying to escape the puck out of their own zone. They will, but Danbury in control of it. Gets indirected right back to Mock. Here double back as Boussel introduces him to the plexiglass on the far side and the top of your screen. And now Danbury will start the breakout. And Evan Lugo with a couple of goals already on the year. He has four. He had a shorthanded goal against the Black Bears earlier this year. That puck got on its edge there. Danbury turned it over in the neutral zone. First time that the Hat Tricks make their way to Vision Veterans Memorial Arena this year. The Black Bears were out in Connecticut back in October right before Halloween for two games and a whistle from behind the play. And it looks like we're going to have a too many men penalty coming up. I saw the indication and the linesman skating down into the offensive zone for the Black Bears. And gate's going to open, and the Black Bears are going to get the first power play. I originally thought that might be a delayed offside there, Brooks, but that was good eyes by you. 17.04 left to go. This Luke, will be a too many men penalty. Luke Richards serving the penalty for the hat tricks. And Richards with 12 points, and anytime you can have somebody with 12 points this early in the season sitting down might be a good thing. Jerks throws a wrist shot right off the faceoff win, blockered away by Wilson. And the Hattricks get to the rebound first, and they throw it all the way down to McVeigh's net. Or set it up on a tee for Cam Yarwood, and the breakout will begin once again for the first power play unit. Now Boussel, cross ice pass, hits Tyson Kirkby inside, but he has it handcuffed at the last second. Yarwood, though, does a great job of gapping up as the puck now finds its way back to Boussel, skating around the faceoff dot. Faked one person, but not the second. Boussel throws a slapper, looking for a tip out in front. Turnaround shot in the blue paint. Wilson made the save, still available. 
And Boussel collects it. Kirkby, a slap shot, rebound for George, he scores! Absolute ex execution, excellence of execution there, Brooks. You saw the wing of the Black Bears cycle that around the zone, take multiple shots. The Patrick's keeper was left without his stick, really got left in the open there. A great shot from the point. Got off the pads, left Jurich on the back door, wide open cage, no stick in hand. For Wilson, he can't make that save, unfortunately. It's a power play goal for the Binghamton Black Bears, and that's just what they needed. Alex, that's their 14th of the season. Their average was 21.3. That was good for fourth in the league. And it had seemed that, at least against Motor City a couple of weekends ago, that the power play almost let the team down. But to go ahead and grab the first power play and make Danbury pay for that bench minor, maybe gives the crowd a little bit of a big boost. And that's what Gavin talked about in the pregame interview as he was stepping in for Coach Gill. Uh, he was able to talk about the, a quick start, and that's exactly what the Black Bears have. So Tyler Jurich gets his eighth goal of the year on the power play. And we will see how the assists come through from the off-ice officials. But now the Hattricks throw a wrist shot, and McVeigh covers up the five hole, throws it into the corner. Haida throws it out to center ice. Black Bears trying to self-pass in the form of Brett Parker tapping it past his defenseman. But instead, the Hattricks will get it deep enough, go off for a partial change with the forwards. And now the Black Bears will corral the loose change. Almost five minutes gone here in period number one, and it's Tyler Jurich with his ninth of the season getting the Black Bears on the board first. Yeah, Brooks, that's a marquee of a good team making opponents pay for bad, bad mistakes. Kuznetsov now with the puck on a tight turn. Sends Fitzgerald down to the ice, a good display of sk skating from the Russian. Throws a hard wrist shot right into the chest of McVeigh. And 15.07. Left to go, McVay covers up. Yeah, he saw a small hole there under McVay's glove. McVay was able to swallow it, however. Good save by him, limit the rebound, hold the puck, let your team get the change. Smart play by McVay. Patrick's lose the face off in the offensive side. Schultz will try to backhand it behind the net, and Gavin Abbott will make sure the puck gets out of the blue line, but Patrick's now still in control with it. Kuznetsov throws it down low for Martian. Martian trying to be the first man to it, but instead McVeigh will beat him to a cover. And we're going to take our first media timeout with 14.52 left to go here in the first period. The Black Bears are on the board thanks to Tyler Jurich. More coming up after this. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox Sports 1430. The area's premier fitness facility, Port Jester Athletic Club, is excited to be open and ready to serve you during your next workout. Join in the new and improved gym experience with fitness and safety top of mind. Updated cleaning and sanitation procedures will help keep you healthy and ready to keep pushing. Plus, utilize the newly renovated and remodeled equipment and exercise spaces. Reach your goals and escape your limits at Port Jester Athletic Club, a one-stop fitness experience. Calling all hockey fans, we are celebrating 50 years of Binghamton hockey this weekend as the Binghamton Black Bears take on the Mississippi Sea Wolves on Friday and Saturday night. It's going to be a great weekend. Get your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Now back to more Black Bears hockey on Fox Sports 1430, Binghamton. Yeah. Welcome back to the action. You're listening to Fox 1430, home of Black Bears hockey. It'll be a offensive zone faceoff coming up for the Danbury Hat Tricks. As the Black Bears do win the faceoff, Mac Lewis so good at taking defensive zone draws. Trying to go cross eyes for Gavin Abbott right in stride, but it gets deflected on the way through by Danbury. Hat Tricks will cross the line two on three, and it'll one hop into the glove of McVeigh. Johnny Ruiz gets sent down to the ice, and that'll get the crowd on their feet and a little bit of extra buzz here, trying to bring the physicality back to Danbury. Yeah, Boilar got it right underneath Johnny Ruiz, just dumped him to the ice, gave him a little snow bath. Good, clean hit. Love to see that kind of hockey played here at the Visions Veterans Memorial Arena. Ruiz tried to win it forward to himself, but the Black Bears sniffed it out. Jake Schultz was the first man to the puck. And now Mac Lewis trying to skate it out to neutralize her, pass it up for Gavin Abbott. Abbott throws a knuckle puck on target for Wilson. He'll have to cover up. And the Black Bears do a good job of just essentially flipping the field to use a football term. And now they have an offensive zone faceoff coming up, getting some fresh bodies on the ice. Yeah, I haven't seen a knuckle puck that's good since the second Mighty Ducks movie against Trinidad and Tobago. Tell you what, Brooks, the boys are moving well tonight. Really getting after it. Aggressive play, forcing Danbury to play in their own end. You love to see it. 
D'Angelo won the faceoff back temporarily, but now a two-on-one going the other way as Jurich got caught flat-footed. Wrist shot, and McVay made the save. Rebound becomes available. Still available in the slot. It looks like Tyson Kirby will be able to push it out to neutralize. He does. Jurich will do the smart thing and just get the puck deep. Force the goaltender to make a play on it. And it's almost a costly turnover right on the stick of Tyson Kirkby. We've seen the Black Bears take advantage of that a couple of times earlier this year. Once against Delaware, excuse me, and once against the Elmira Mammoth. Five-hole shot, and the game is tied. Luke Richards never let the puck settle, and you could tell that McVeigh really wasn't ready for that shot as the game is tied at one with 13.54 left to go. I, I think he thought the puck was still in the middle of the ice uh, with me, uh, with. D'Angelo, who laid the body on the uh, big bit hit center ice there, and then it just basically snuck through to the right side circle where Richards got that shot off, and I don't think McVay once found the puck. Just snuck past him under, underneath his blocker. Now it's one to one, 13.50 left to go as you got to look at it on the Heinz Energy replay. And now that puck batted right out of midair by Zach Pemeleon, and Pemeleon was the first man to it, but a good job by Fitzgerald to tie up his man. Brett Parker had no idea where it was. The linesman did and inadvertently got in the way. Black Bears get it in the offensive side, but they give it right back to the hat tricks. And now Danbury trying to go through the middle of the ice, but Yuri Hada steps up, makes the play. Pamela Leon blows a tire. Ida trying to go to the top shelf. The red light came on, but the puck's on the outside of the net. It fooled the goal judge sitting behind the net. Play will continue. Pamela Leon now trying to up it to his man. Tristan Mock, and Mock comes away with it. The southpaw throws it up for number 11, Brendan Dowler, who gets it deep. McVeigh comes out of his net to make sure that the hat tricks can't take control of it. Cross ice pass to Ivoshkin, no icing as he beat the man to the dot. Ivoshkin trying to use that wraparound power move that he's so good at. You can tell that he's up his physicality from last year to this year. Wraparound, nobody home through the blue paint, though, but Thompson collecting the pass. One timer from Parker, who's had a quietly good season and Wilson will cover up the legs and squeeze tight. And it's shots on goal, eight to seven in favor of the hat tricks as you get a look at the Heinz Energy replay. I'll tell you what, Ivashkin, you can tell he, he wants to keep that lead at top of the league leading goal score. He's pushing the puck to that, really driving hard and fighting guys off the body to get those great opportunities, Brooks. Offensive zone face off and the Black Bears win it. Goes off a of defenseman out in front, cleaned up by Jared Yao. But now Brendan Shahan will paw it down at center ice and just throw it on target for McVay. And we're seeing a lot of the goaltenders cover up very quickly today. They don't want to give anybody any loose opportunities out no, in front. No, it's a smart idea to cover that up. It allows your team to get the change if you want. Let you set up how you want to do in the offensive zone rather than strub that puck to your defender and scramble in to clear the zone. Take the free face off. Face off won by Mac Lewis. Another defensive win. For Lewis, that's seven, and Black Boylar will pass it off the boards. Chipped it one more time away by Jamie Bussell. Gavin Abbott down low. He has it hop and stick at the last second. Lewis, though, throws it behind the net a little bit too far in front of Abbott as the hat tricks are going to be the first man to the puck, or first team to the puck, rather. And now skating with it out of his zone is John McDonald. McDonald will get it deep. Lewis first to it, chips it ahead, and the Black Bears trying to catch Danbury in a change. Bussell with a booming slap shot gets deflected by Richards on the way through into the net and no further play. Ideal Bowling Center is where Binghamton hockey fans bowl with open bowling all week long, money saving specials. Ideal Bowling is the great place for family, friends, company parties and special occasions. Ideal Bowling Center, 119 Jennings Street in Endicott. There's so much more than just your favorite bowling alley. I'll tell you what, Brooks, what a great idea to compliment your company's Christmas party, Ideal Bowling, and then head out to a Binghamton Black Bears game. Can't think of a better night in and the Southern Tier to have. Especially coming around the Christmas holidays, the Black Bears will be in home for a game on December 23rd. And Santa will be making an appearance from the North Pole right before he heads back up and starts delivering presents for all the good little girls and boys. But that's a little bit ahead of time. Let's talk about tonight. So far, we're about nine minutes into the game. It's one to one. Black Bears scoring on the power play. And the Danbury Hattricks getting an even strength goal thanks to Luke Richards. And now, skating with the puck is just so. Throws it cross eyes to Richards, the goal scorer, and matched up now against the goal scorer for the Black Bears, Tyler Jurich. 
Saucers it to the open corner for Tyler, or excuse me, Cam Yarwood. Picks it up off the boards, tries to toe drag around just so. He's a little bit too good for that. Two on two opportunity. A wrist shot that's easily blockered into the corner. Another shot becomes available, but McVeigh covers up the rebound as his stick got dislodged from his blocker at the last second. It, and, was, a, it was a great job in the defensive zone. They had a bit of a scramble there on that wide rebound. McVeigh centered himself, swallowed the puck, pulled the uh, pulled the rebound, grabbed the face off. And I'll tell you what, Brooks, if you if your business wants to do some sort of Christmas party, there's no better place to do it than a Binghamton Black Bears hockey game. Call me, Alex Jones, 722-7367. Brooks, we have an opposing goal. Yep, right on cue off of the faceoff. Danbury cashes in, and it's two to one. Hat tricks right out in front. Tristan Mock gives the hat tricks their first lead of the game. Almost like a set play right off of the faceoff is we're gonna take a look at the Heinz Energy replay. Nine minutes gone exactly, and it's two to one Danbury now. I'll tell you what, Brooks, that puck just seemed to squirt through, unfortunately, through McVay's pad, slid in the back of the net. Right off of the face off, and like you said, it goes five hole right underneath the leg pad. Got some of it, but not enough as it trickled in barely past the goal line, but doesn't matter how it goes in, as long as it crosses the red line, it's gonna count the same. It's two to one, and now the Hattricks have their first lead of the contest and they also lead the shots on goal 11 to seven. We're seeing now how the Black Bears respond playing from behind for the first time tonight. Out come the hat tricks and Mock first man to it, the latest goal scorer in the contest. Gets pinned up temporarily by Haida against the wall. Former Black Bear Marshawn now with it matched up against his teammate at one time, Austin Thompson and Thompson gets the better of Marshawn. Danbury not happy about the physicality of that hit. And now Fitzgerald drops it back for Parker. Wrist shot and easily kicked out with a purpose by Brian Wilson. Dan Barry will just give it back to the Black Bears so they can get some fresh bodies out on the blue line. Ivoshkin self passes it off the boards and he's going to take a heavy hit. And a broken stick out there on the ice as a result of the hit. And skating away with it out of harm is Gonzalez. Now up to the captain, Johnny Ruiz. Ruiz will blocker it, in, excuse me, McVeigh blockers Ruiz's shot into the corner. 10th forward out, and we have a penalty coming up. And we have hooking co hooking call being made by the official in the offensive zone. We'll tell you about the penalty when we come back. Danbury now on top, 2-1, to one, with 9.46 left to go. You're listening to Fox Sports on 14.30. Replay as we come back from commercial. Matu Boilar guilty of a hook. And Alex, while the Danbury Hattricks have been in the top of the lead in almost every category, one spot that they find themselves in last is is their power play conversion, only operating at 13.5% this year coming into the game. Only seven power play goals. It, it's interesting to see those kind of stats, bro, because this team is so effective in five on play, five play. You think it translate over, but they just have not been able to get over that um on the power play end. It almost seems at some points that uh, Danbury would, would like it to be like a football penalty and given the option to decline and keep the game at five on five where they've excelled so far. They have over a 20 plus goal differential on their first 10 games of the season. Here's some good passing from the hat tricks and a no look wrist shot and McVeigh does a good job of holding the post and here will melt it down on the first shot of the power play. Yeah, it's a great job there. Binghamton are forcing pressure in their own defensive zone making sure the Danbury Hattricks don't get a good angle to shoot from, and that's all you can ask for from your penalty kill. It'll be Tyson Kirkby and Gino D'Angelo, the two forwards, out there for Coach Gary Gill as Tyson Kirkby gets tied up off the faceoff, but a great job by Cam Yarwood from his own goal line in the corner to just backhand that one all the way out. I don't think it hit the ice until it got into the blue line. 
That was a great job by Yarwood clearing that puck, making sure Dan Barry didn't get a chance to turn it into an uh, odd man rush from the neutral zone. No quarter given at the line by JT Walters as Dan Barry will have to tag up. They're going to send out the second power play unit to try to generate some more chances. They have one shot on the power play so far. Same four bodies out on the ice for the Black Bears. D'Angelo, Yarwood, Kirkby, and Walters, the four dressed in black. And now the play is on sides temporarily for Danbury, but a little bit too cute of passing. Gives it right back to the Black Bears, and they can throw it 200 feet down the ice. 35 seconds left to go in the boy Lar penalty. Yeah, uh, Brooks, it looks Johnny Ruiz came off the ice scream there. Very not happy with his power play, that first power play team for the Danbury Hattricks. And you can understand why. They haven't been able to really control the puck in the attacking zone once this period, and now they're getting called for a hand pass. Uh, Black Bears doing a good job defensively so far through the first minute, 38 seconds on the penalty. 22 seconds left to go. Boilar will more than likely skate right off of the penalty box gate and come right over to the bench because you don't want to play with three defensemen out on the ice. But we'll see how things change here in the next 22 seconds. They get some fresh bodies due to the Black Bears. Fitzgerald and Schultz now the blue liners as Luke Richards is given a warning on a pre or a head start on the faceoff dot. It's getting chippy here, Brooks. Ivashkin and uh, McDonald for, for were giving each other the business all through their off-ice interactions. Yeah, can't help but think that the Black Bears aren't going to forget what happened to Gavin Yates by Daniel Ainsbury and was given an eight-game suspension. A heavy hit laid on on Jesso down low and no quarter given as Jesso has some words for Austin Thompson out at center ice, but the Black Bears kill off the penalty. The Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill is officially one for one on the night, and the Black Bears doing a good job on special teams so far, but on even terms on the ice, the hat tricks cross the line off sides, but they had the advantage two to one as the puck is flicked up into the stands. Nobody was looking for it. Hope everybody's okay. Yeah, you hate to see that, Brooks. It's not really a heads up play by, uh, just so got into the zone there, got a little too deep and just got caught being lazy coming back into the zone. And a, a good offensive rush for the hat tricks that just seems to be a, a, a little bit of negligence on their part, negated by an offside. Back to five on five as we get a look at the Heinz Energy replay, a heavy tattoo hit from Jake Schultz and Colin Fitzgerald, the blue liners teaming up to lay a hard hit on a member of the hat tricks, a wrist shot that hit the post and a black bear shaking up down in front is Gino D'Angelo. D'Angelo makes his way back up to his feet. That's the good news, but the hat tricks seem to be clicking at five on five once again. Yeah, that was a real unselfish play by D'Angelo getting in front of that puck. Three on two now for the black bears. They cross the line on sides. Jurts ups it for D'Angelo, tries to get it to his forehand, but he runs out of real estate down low. D'Angelo maybe skating a little bit too fast for the benefit of his team as the Hattricks will just dump it in. All three forwards will go off for a change. 6.42 left to go here in this one. Danbury leads by one, and they also lead the shots on goal, 13 to nine. Jake Schultz pinching in from his blue line, gets it in down low, throws a centering pass out in front from Mac Lewis, can't be connected with. Schultz throws a wrist shot on the way through, looking for a tip by Kirkby, right out in front, and now it'll glide out to neutralize where Colin Fitzgerald will just dump the puck down low and allow the Binghamton forwards to change. Wilson comes out of his net, tees it up, and Mac Lewis lays a heavy hit on a member of the Hattricks down low as well. I believe that was, I, I don't have a number six on my roster there, Brooks. It might be a new addition. We are going to prefer in our next media timeout just who's wearing number six tonight for the Hattricks. Didn't see anything go through the waiver wire. And with the hat tricks arriving a little bit late into town, didn't have an ability to go down and catch them pregame. Colin Fitzgerald now skating across his own blue line, center ice, and now the offensive end with it, trying to go one-man show. Gets behind the net, centering pass out in front, in between the skates of Gavin Abbott. Would have been a golden opportunity for the Black Bears, and now here come the hat tricks odd man. Pass out in front, and McVeigh can't find the loose change, and Danbury grabs their third goal of the period. And what Black Bears thought had an opportunity on one and turns into another Danbury goal. And it's three to one as 
Dustin Gesso cashes in on the loose change with 534 left to go. Yeah, Dustin Gesso had some hand gestures and some words for the Black Bears bench. I'll give you a hint, Brooks, it was just a singular finger up towards the bench. Uh, you, you don't like to see that sort of celebration. We understand this is a chippy game, but I mean, there's women and children here, you know, you can't have that sort of display of unsportsmanlike conduct on the ice. Five foot 34 left to go. And now Danbury's up by two. They grab three here in the first period. And Black Bears just have to do a better job of gapping up defensively. And even if you make a turnover, you got to hustle back into your own end and make sure that you come back. And now here comes Austin Thompson skating with it on his outside. Tries to toe drag around a defender, but Tristan Mott comes up with the loose change anyway. And now the hat tricks. Holding on to a two-goal advantage as Tristan Mock still skating with it. Throws a backhand into the open corner. A heavy hit put on Tristan Mock by Jake Schultz. And Schultz has it in the corner. And Schultz is trying to give a rough ride out in front by Marshan. And Marshan knows better not to go after Schultz. This is delayed off sides against the hat tricks. They can't enter the zone. And instead it's just wristed into the Binghamton end. Matu Boilar now. Will throw it across, and it's one up for Ivashkin. Ivashkin gets interfered with wraparound to save made by Wilson. Thompson the rebound, they score! And now the teams are going at it, getting hustled. It's three to two Black Bears, and everybody's on their feet. Yeah, I, I didn't see what really caused all the stir there. Thompson put it in the back of the net square. Ivashkin really didn't run into the keeper too much. It seems like it's getting real physical here. Brendan Dowler has lost his helmet in the shuffle. I believe it was Johnny Ruiz getting in the face of the official right away. Austin Thompson now with some words back to the Danbury bench and here use one finger but it's a pointer. And now it's a 3-2 contest. It, you know what, this is going to be one of the best games of the weekend slate. We get it on a Wednesday on two for one beer night. The boys are frisky, they're ready to go. Great goal there by Thompson, driving the net. Uh, just Austin Thompson really just drove the net, kept his stick to the ice, puts it right over the blocker. The Danbury keep buries in the back of the net. And you see that Ruiz gets tangled up with the official right away. Thompson took exception to that. And then Dowler took exception to Thompson. Schultz took exception to Dowler, and it's just a domino effect. When one person gets pushed, the next person comes in, then another person, and it's just a whole lot of black and orange getting mixed together right now. It is. It's, it looks like a, like a Bengals, uh, Bengals and Browns tailgate out there right now, Brooks. Just a lot of black and uh, orange jerseys getting into it with each other. It's an even strength goal scored by Austin Thompson. On the delayed penalty sequence, Nikita Ivashkin now with points in eight straight games. Here will still be searching for goals in eight straight games, but his point streak will stay alive. And Brett Parker picks up his 11th point of the season as well. And it appears that the Black Bears are the ones headed to the penalty box as the captain, Jake Schultz, is standing halfway in the door. Yeah, I believe it's gonna... Let's take a look at the Heinz Energy replay for watching at home on YouTube. You see Dowell and Ruiz come to the official and Schultz pushes Dowler into the board. The linesman comes in, and Boylar tries to separate another man. And now it'll be another opportunity for the Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill. Yeah, it's an unfortunate penalty for Schultz. Uh, you normally see some sort of offsetting minor there, but I guess because he was at it, it's just an unfortunate circumstance after goal. Also a rare one, Brooks, where you get a center ice draw for a power play. And the referees will melt it down as they say D'Angelo was on top of it. Good news for the Black Bears, they can use this timeout to draw something up and talk about what they want to execute on this next penalty kill. We're gonna take a quick step aside, come back with more. Black Bears on the penalty, but it's a one goal contest. Danbury leads three to two. You're listening to Binghamton Hockey on Fox Sports 1430.
Welcome back to the action. It's a neutral zone faceoff right outside the Binghamton blue line. That's one back by the Hat Tricks, and the Hat Tricks are back out on the power play. They did not convert the first time, but Jake Schultz was given a minor for cross-checking, and he's going to sit two minutes. And you hate you see your captain in the penalty box as Yarwood loses his stick. This is almost like a half man down, essentially, for the Black Bears. But Kirkby does the wise thing and gives it to a defenseman. More important that the guy in front of the net has a stick than the man guarding somebody up top. And now the hat tricks with control of the puck. And now skating with it is Gonzalez. Throws a wrist shot on. Rebound and a big save made by McVeigh to keep this a one-goal contest. A Kirkby great. without a stick now gets out in front. That puck never made it all the way through. And Kirkby trying to lay a heavy hit on a man in the corner. D'Angelo does a smart thing not chasing after a puck when he knows the teammate doesn't have a stick. It appears that Yarwood has picked one up. And now Gonzalez passing it. A one-timer and McVeigh makes a leg pad save. And it's kicked away, and the Hattricks collect the puck with 40 seconds left to go in the power play. Yeah, it was a great swap by, it was a great swap by, uh, by Kirkby and Yarwood. Yarwood able to drop, he, drop Kirkby's stick, pick up his own stick. Kirkby was able to pick up his own stick. It was a great job in the penalty kill, a little inside hockey. You want that guy without a stick away from the shooter so you can clear the puck. Look out, shorthanded opportunity coming the other way for Josh Newberg, who gets a heavy hit from Dustin Jasso. You probably knew that that was going to come, as Jasso doesn't want to be the only one getting picked on out on the ice. And it's time for the bullier to get bullied. There you go, if that made sense. Kuznetsov with a tight turn at the wrist shot. They're looking for a tip on the way through. Black Bears first to it, and they kill off the penalty again. Danbury penalty, or power play, is 0 for 2 on the day. Lear sounds like somebody who's playing up in the Quebec Junior League, at, uh, Brooks. And now the Hattricks will touch up. John McDonald throws it out to his own blue line. Hattricks put it right back in their own zone. Jared Yao almost gave the puck right away to Binghamton. That could have been an odd man opportunity for free. And now Colin Fitzgerald overskated it temporarily. Gives it right back to Thompson, the last goal scorer for the Black Bears, who just indirected in to the offensive side. Black Bears, though, take control over it back in neutralized. Boylar throws it in on the delayed offsides. Binghamton touches up. McDonald first to it, and her go on his forehand side. All the way across the ice, Pamela on gets a heavy hit from Yuri Haida. Love to see the Czechia native throwing the body around in his first game at home, only his second game of the season for the Black Bears. Play is on sides for Binghamton. Brett Parker already with an assist, now looking for a goal. Centering pass out in front. Nobody was expecting it. Haida throws a wrist shot that's blocked on the way through. And out come the hat tricks. Three on two if Dan Barry hurries. Play is on sides. And Lugo throws a low angle wrist shot wide of the net and off the high glass. Ivashka now one on two. Or have to double back. Center ice and Lugo tries to upend Ivashkin. Ivashkin holds his ground, but Lugo comes away with the puck. And a penalty coming up. Don't know if they called it when Lugo played it or when Parker played it. It's going to be on Gordy Bonnell. And it looks like Bonnell's going to get the gate for a cross check. The referee not putting up with anything. And I believe Tyson Kirby was asking the official if that was a two-minute or a four-minute one. I think it's going to be offsetting minors, Brooks. Oh, yep. Iboshkin also making his way to the penalty box. So this will be four on four. Coming up, the official right on top of it. Tonight's officials brought to you by our friends over at Atlas James Construction. Steve Pimento and, or excuse me, Scott Pimento and Steve Cook are the referees. Michael Imperlo and Isaac Kessler, the linesmen. Four on four hockey. And we'll see if this falls into special teams, which has favored the Black Bears so far, or even strength, which has favored Dan Barry. One minute left to go here in the first period. Hat tricks up by one. Mac Lewis had the puck temporarily, but it gets it stripped away by Abduella and a heavy hit from Mac Lewis on Abduella. Abduella will just shake up, but a penalty coming up. They're gonna say it. There's nothing good there, and now Abduella has more to say to Mac Lewis after the whistle. It looks like it's gonna be on uh, Xavier Abdullah, possibly? Take a look at the Heinz Energy or replay. Mac Lewis? They're going to say that's on Mac Lewis. It's not a cross check. 
That looked like a clean hit to me, Brooks. I, I don't understand the call there. Maybe perhaps a roughing. Did he do something on the way down that the video camera did not catch? Now they're going to get both of them. And we will stay at four on four. So two men aside in the penalty box. Nothing really changes. And... I'm just going to wait for that one to come through on the official stat sheet and see how the officials described that one. It'll be interesting to see how that's called, Brooks, with 37 seconds left. The Black Bears have been doing well on the four-on-four, -four, putting on pressure, and we'll see if they can continue to do that. Schultz now skating with it out of his own end for the Black Bears. Here, just dump it into the corner, end over end. Kirkby trying to be the first man to it, but an offensive zone faceoff coming up as both Ruiz and Kirkby will hack at it. And with 22 seconds left to go, it's an offensive zone faceoff coming up for the Black Bears. So we have roughing and triffing are the calls, Brooks. An interesting, interesting uh, call there from the officials. Schultz has the faceoff win. A wrist shot put on Kirkby with the one-man screen out in front. Can't find it. Instead, somebody who can is Evan Lugo. This play is way off sides as Danbury gets a little bit of a two-head, much of a head start. 12 seconds left to go here in period number one. And we've had five goals already through the first 20 minutes of the contest. Yeah, Brooks, it has been a, uh, an exciting first period. 31 combined shots, five goals. Five penalties. It is six penalties. It's been a, and it, uh, that's most. That's most you get from one game normally, Brooks. Five seconds left to go here, as the Black Bears will probably not get one more shot off. They will not, and that will send us to the first break. As a uh, as appears Yarwood, that somebody Yarwood took a spill. Yarwood lost his edge. Appears that everybody's okay. Cooler heads will prevail. The crowd ooing and eyeing, just making sure cooler heads are going to be A-OK -okay right here. We're going to take a quick time out, but when we come back, we will have the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report. Don't go anywhere, folks. We have a great hockey game in store tonight. You don't want to miss it. You've been listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430. Hockey fans, the Black Bears are back in town next Friday and Saturday. That's December 2nd and 3rd for 7 o'clock showdowns against the Watertown Wolves. Come enjoy a weekend of Black Bears hockey and cheer on your favorite team. Get your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com or call the office at 607-722-7367. Fans, the Binghamton Black Bears are having a special Black Friday sale. 15% off all merchandise and apparel for one day only, November 25th. You have to act fast. Use code BBFRIDAY at checkout and save 15% off of your total purchase. So make sure on Friday you head over to BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Fans, this upcoming Cyber Monday, the Black Bears are having one of their best ticket deals of the entire season. For only $10, you can sit in select seats for any December home game. That's right, folks, any December home game in a select section just for $10. Call the office at 607-722-7367 or skate over to BinghamtonBlackBears.com. But hurry quick, this is a one-day only offer. Now it's time to take a look back from the previous Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. Make sure to subscribe to the Binghamton Black Bears YouTube page so you can catch every show. Join us Tuesday, November 29th at 6 p.m. Come join myself, Brooks Hill, along with head coach Gary Gill and the entire Black Bears 2022 and 23 roster as we take a deep dive into the Black Bears season recaps this past weekend's game and look ahead to the future. Tully's on the Vestal Parkway, home of the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. We cannot wait to see you out there. Welcome back inside Tully's Good Times, and now I'm joined by Black Bears forward Tyson Kirkby. And Tyson, thanks for taking some time out of your evening and joining us on the show. Yeah, no problem. Happy to be here. And boy, what a weekend for you. You have a four-point night on Friday night, and you get a hat trick just in the third period alone. So obviously you were doing some right things or, you know, as maybe some of your teammates say, just cleaning up the garbage out in front at the right time. But two hat tricks so far this season for the Black Bears in the last two weekends. Since the last time we were here at Tully's, actually, have you been doing anything different that you weren't doing at the beginning of the year or what seems to be going right for you? Uh, I just think uh, the puck is going in the back of the net right now. I think uh, 
first couple weekends, you know, I had some scoring chances. Uh, it just it wasn't going in. Uh, I think that last last Friday night there, you know, some lucky goals, probably one of the more ugly hat tricks you're going to see. A couple banks in front of the net, but, uh, you know, they all count at the end of the day, so. Well, you had one goal on Friday night from essentially no angle down at the goal line. Talk about, let's run through that one. Unfortunately, I don't have it where I can pull it up and we can watch it live on the replay about it. But you're going down, and I believe you cut through the left or left lane of the ice, left wing, whatever you want to call it. You get down low, you pick your head up, and is it just, okay, like, hey, I'm just going to try to throw this to the net and maybe the goalie's going to spit it back out? Or it's like, oh, no, I see a window and I'm going to go for it there. Yeah, so actually, the play, like, once I got down into the corner, um, I looked up and I could see Jared going to the back door. Um, a lot of goal, they're going to respect that, him coming down that side, thinking the puck's going to go that way. And uh, Babin came off his post a little bit there, and I saw that little gap. And, you know, I thought, let's throw, let's throw it on there and see what happens. If it goes in, great. If not, you know, there could be a rebound there. We got guys going to the net. So, uh yeah, I saw him cheating off the post a little bit and was able to bank off the pad and go in. So, It kind of seems that the worst-case scenario for you right there in that situation is he just melts it down and it's an offensive zone face-off. And, you know, you could create a high-danger rebound or, you know, in the best-case scenario, you find the back of the net. And three goals and one assist, but you didn't have a goal going into the third period on Friday night, and the team also found themselves – uh, in a deficit going into the locker room. You guys got down early, 2 to nothing in Friday night's game. What was the talk in the locker room um, after the first 20 minutes? Yeah, I think uh, we, came out, we came out pretty good in the first five minutes of that game, and then kind of things didn't go our way, and we found ourselves, like you said, going down into the third period, and we knew that we hadn't played our best yet. Um, so we were just looking, you know, we had an opportunity to come out and play a good 20 minutes and win a hockey game and you can never really be upset about that. So, uh, you know, in that intermission, we were just, you know, pucks to the net, let's let's just get some more traffic. We wanted to try to get more low shots on net. Um, Babin, Babin was catching all the pucks up high. You know, he's got a good glove hand. So we wanted to try to get some pucks in the skates, create those second chance opportunities. And uh, obviously we were able to come out and we, we got one early. I think it was like the first 30 seconds of the third period. And, you know, that kind of gets the guys going. And uh, I think it definitely went to our legs for the rest of the third period. And, you know, we played a good 20 minutes and we got a win. Yeah, our do you one better. It was actually 28 seconds in. And, of course, it was your goal way to not give yourself the shout-out right there. And your line mates getting the assist, Gino D'Angelo and Tyler Jurich. And what is it with that line that had so much success this weekend? Or, you know, at least me personally, I feel like I hadn't seen that exact three combination uh, before we got to Motor City on Friday night. But you guys produced a ton of points this past weekend. Uh, yeah, I think uh, when I got here last year, um, you know, I started out with Gino and Jurich, so there was some familiarity there. Um, but I just think, yeah, we're, we're, it was just clicking in that third period. You know, my line mates are creating space. And that first goal, you know, like I said, it was a rebound in front of the net dirty goal but you know it banks in off a defenseman and go like they all count and uh i think as a line we've been we've been playing pretty well last weekend for sure i mean a couple goals not getting scored on so that's big well there's there's no pictures on the game sheet i'm holding one right here it doesn't tell you how it went in it just tells you that it did go in it also says that the blackbirds are really controlling the game at the five on five pace um special teams uh, struggled a little bit to produce this week for the Black Bears. I think you guys would be the first ones to say that true. But you guys really dominated the game both Friday and Saturday while it was five on five on the ice. Yeah, uh, I, I would definitely agree with what you said. You know, we were we were kind of feeling ourselves in the five on five. A um, couple tough penalties. Uh, we we know we got to clean up our PK for sure if we want to be uh, successful, especially this weekend coming up. Um, but yeah, you know, power play. Puck's moving around. It's just not going in. But, we, you know, like that third period, we got that big power play goal from Jurich there. So that's huge. Um, you know, at a time like that, it's a big goal. So I can take a one for five if, you know, we're scoring that one in the third period there. It's a big goal. Yeah, it, the, the most important power play is always the next one. And that's the same with the next power play goal opportunity. And you set up Tyler Jurich for a one-timer, and Jurich was able to go through Babin's five hole. And that gave the Black Bears the first lead that they had all night. And the building 
which was a sellout Friday night, just absolutely erupted. Do you think after the power play goal from Jurich that truly the game had shifted and you guys had seized all the momentum? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think, uh, like I said earlier, that scoring that quick one there definitely went to our legs. And then when we find uh, we find that power play goal there, I think it's it's definitely huge for us. And the building was it was great all weekend, right? Uh, all the fans, you know, they were loud all weekend, up or down. So it was yeah, it was a big goal, and we could definitely feel the game had shifted into our favor. And it was at that point we're just focusing on protecting that lead. We also want to give a big shout-out to our friends over at Lockheed Martin, not too far away from where we are in Binghamton over in Owego. Uh, their campus, uh, beautiful. Hopefully we can get some of the guys out there in the near future to take a tour. We are also able to raise a ton of money uh, for local veteran organizations with the military appreciation jersey. Uh, how did you guys like the design of the jersey? It seemed that you guys were kind of excited around the locker room when I brought them down for the first time, and some of you guys got to take your picture in them. And uh, but was there just any sense, uh, any more sense of, oh hey, like these look really good, or oh hey, like we need to go out there and you know play a little extra harder tonight? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think it's uh, it was an important weekend for not only the Americans but the Canadians as well. And uh, the jerseys were they were phenomenal. Uh, great job with the design. Um, I wasn't here last year for the military jerseys, but uh, I think these these stacked up pretty well with any other jersey that I saw, for sure. Well, that was the first specialty jersey this year for the Binghamton Black Bears. We have some more coming up in store, 50th anniversary for Binghamton, celebrating all the years and all the teams that have played right here in Broome County and also 50th, an or excuse me, I just said 50th anniversary and uh, this one might be coming a little under wraps. The design's not been made public yet, but ugly Christmas sweater jerseys this year for the Black Bears. So a whole lot of specialty jerseys. So if you were not able to win one in the live auction after the game, it is going to be okay. We have plenty of more specialty jerseys coming up later this season. Um, Tyson, let's talk about something that I asked Coach about, and it's about playing games back-to-back. -back. And Let's shift our focus from Motor City to this weekend in Delaware. And it's a weird circumstance. It's a home and home for the Black Bears this week. Friday night, the Black Bears will be on the road playing at 730 uh, in the Thunderdome that they call uh, for Delaware. And then driving back and playing the next day at home. What's the mindset about going to get your body ready to make the necessary changes like oh hey like you know Friday night's going to be a long night but we also have to make sure that we're ready to go out and play a competitive game on Saturday at home in front of our fans yeah I think uh, obviously our main focus right now is Friday night and then uh, after that game you know the focus shifts to Saturday just taking care of your body you know we're going to be on the bus for a while Friday night but uh, when you get back try to get a good night's sleep good rest uh uh, get up early the next day hopefully you know maybe come to the rink get a stretch or something like that get the body moving and then just all about how you're gonna you know take your fluids and, and get the food that you need into you after the game and uh, on Saturday as well and just do your best you can to be ready for the second game a big opportunity for the Black Bears to grab six more points let's stay on the topic of the bus and a little bit more of a light-hearted question for you are you a team pillow or team neck pillow for a long bus ride? Uh, I'm going to have to go pillow for sure. Okay. I'm also in the pillow department, but I was too afraid to bring a pillow on the first road trip of the season because I thought you guys would make fun of me. But I'm glad I have someone like you, Tyson, to stick up for me next time I bring a full-size pillow on the Black Bears bus. And finally, uh, Tyson, just, just to reiterate it one more time, congratulations on your second hat trick of the season. Also a four-point night. You were the first star of the game Friday night. And uh, we hope that the scoring continues for you. It seems that you have gotten the monkey off your shoulders. You know, knock on wood three times. Don't ever want to jinx it. But, Tyson, again, thank you for spending some time with us here on a Tuesday night. And good luck on Friday. Thank you very much.
power outages are a thing of the past when you have a Generac home standby generator installed by the team at American Electric. Give them a call today or visit them on the web at aegenerators.com. If you're looking to install a beautiful, durable, and handcrafted countertop, call Alice James Construction. The Southern Tier's most trusted stone fabrication will design and install your dream countertop and let you choose from a premium selection of natural stones like marble, granite, or quartzite. Stone or granite countertops starting as low as $35 per square foot installed. Schedule your free quote and receive a free sync with your countertop project. Call 607-275-5495. Getting your hands on an all-new CF Moto side-by-side -side or four-wheeler is now easier than ever at ExciteMotorsports.com. Purchase your next power sports vehicle with our new, easy, and quick online buying experience. Browse inventory on ExciteMotorsports.com. Buy. Get approved for financing and e-sign online right from your phone. Ride. Have your new power sports vehicle delivered to your home the next day at no extra charge. Browse. Buy. Ride. Fun starts here at ExciteMotorsports.com. Whether you're a high school or college athlete or a weekend warrior, Guthrie is the area's premier sports medicine program, offering injury evaluation, concussion management, physical therapy, and more. With a full team of providers across New York and Pennsylvania offering same or next day appointments, Guthrie gets you back in the game as quickly as possible. Call the Guthrie Sports Medicine team today at 866-GUTHRIE or learn more at guthrie.org slash sportsmed. Good-natured Canadian Pilsner. Magic 1017. Best radio station. Keeps getting better. Better music selection. <laughs> Best ever. <laughs> Best ever. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Number one for music and fun. Like Watertown area. Running through the Continental Division very quickly, Columbus sits atop with 26 points. The Carolina Thunderbirds in second with 21. Motor City Rockers in third with 19. Port Huron, the weekend opponent for the Black Bears, with 17 in fourth. And the Mississippi Seawolves at the bottom with eight in fifth place. Now, transition over to the Empire Division. Danbury and Binghamton tied at 25, but Danbury has the tiebreaker. Watertown in third with 10. Delaware with four and Elmira with one point from their overtime loss earlier this year. That's a look at the standings and when we come back, we'll have the third, or excuse me, the second period of this quite exciting hockey game. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430 in Binghamton.
Lane, Jennings Street in Endicott has 38 amazing lanes of bowling, large video screens, and automatic scoring. But that's not all. Hey, Ideal Michael, Bowling Center going. has a newly remodeled bar with six cylinders. All right. Billiards, dogs, Welcome back to the action now. Here's the second period Don't underway. Don't forget about Ideal Bowling Center snack at counter for your appetite. And a pro shop for all your bowling needs. It's still four on four. And Ideal out Bowling Center. Hattrick 119 with Jennings control Street in Endicott. Gets it down low. Centering pass. Nobody's home. Tyler Gerich will just chop at it. It stays down low. Now back to more Black Bears hockey on Fox Sports 1430. Binghamton. And Brendan Shahan. Welcome back in. Joining the action in progress. 30 seconds in. Nobody with a shot on goal yet in the second period. So if you're just joining us in on the radio, you haven't missed anything. Black Bears now skating with it in their own side. It's four on four hockey as there's two people aside in the penalty box as Jurt crosses the line on sides. Jurt trying to get it to his forehand. Instead has a backhand steered wide of Brian Wilson's net. Good wrap check from Cam Yarwood to separate his man from the puck. And Jurt has his stick tied up and he's sent down to the ice by Brendan Dowler. That's a clean hit. The crowd will moan and jeer about it, but this is icing coming up against Danbury as the first pair of guilty infractors come out of the penalty box in the form of Ivoshkin and Gordy Bonnell. Yeah, Dowler was given Jurich the business, gave him a high shot with a stick. Shocked there wasn't a call there, but it seems Danbury was so distracted by it that they iced the puck. Can't complain about it when it uh, leads to a uh, poor play. Face off one back by Danbury, but Brett Parker does a good job getting on the four check. And while you were gone, Alex, something that the Black Bears did so well against the Delaware Thunder was forecheck and really pressure the Thunder, making the defense have to make a ton of plays. We'll see if they can get to that forecheck at the same level here tonight. Boy, Larson's his man into the boards. Two on two now. Skating with it is Brett Parker. Parker already with an assist tonight. Gets separated from the puck, getting held up legally by Brendan Dowler. Puck escapes him and finds the stick of Jared Yao. Ivoshkin sends his man into the boards, and Ivoshkin's going to be headed right back to the penalty box on a hick that goes up a little bit too high. And Danbury will skate away with it, letting an extra attacker come out on the form of Johnny Ruiz. Uh, now, I'll, I'll tell you, Brooks, it, it didn't look super high to me, but the referees have to take control of this game, and they got to do what they got to do. And another man coming out of the penalty box in the form of Mac Lewis and Xavier Abdullah. But Nikita Ivoshkin will take Matt Lewis's place and go right back and probably his seat's still warm for where he was sitting down beforehand. Take a look at the Heinz energy replay. Oh, nope. We're gonna talk about the Northeastern Striping Corporation. Penalty kill, your one-stop shop for paving and concrete needs. Danbury power play hasn't shown anything yet tonight. As Ivoshkin, I believe, just came up a little bit too high and made contact with the head. It's a minor, and another roughing penalty given out to Nikita I. Moskin. First penalty of the second period as you hear the crowd boo and moan about it. Black Bears, though, with control of the puck. Kirkby will just glide it down the ice, and Danbury has not been able to get into the zone cleanly yet so far. Yeah, Brooks, it, it is one of the, that is a penalty on Ivashkin. It's unfortunate him for take, but the referees need to take control of this game. It was getting very physical. They got to set the precedent. Hey, no dirty stuff, no cheap stuff. It's an it's a unfortunate penalty, but one they have to call. However, Danbury really has not been able to set up in the offensive zone on their power play yet. We'll see if this one does any better. It'll hop the stick of uh, Brendan Shahan at the last second. He'll have to collect it behind his own net. They go D to D, but an errant pass from Johnny Ruiz forces a odd man opportunity. Look out, Gavin Abbott with a head of steam gets it down low, but a little bit too far out in front of Josh Newberg. But the Black Bears are just content to waste some precious seconds off the clock of this Nikita Ivoshkin penalty. Yeah, the Black Bears doing a good job there on the four check, continuing the pressure, really making the hat tricks feel it. And uh, I and then uh, Mac McVeigh. Uh, Burns on the puck there, and we get an offensive zone faceoff for the Hattricks. But I'll tell you what, Brooks, the Black Bears have looked so good on their defensive zone faceoffs. It's one of those things that you can tell they've really been working on. Only shot on goal so far belongs to Dan Barry. Just over three minutes gone. Black Bears really firing around this penalty kill as Bussell was trying to come away with a loose puck. The captain, Schultz, will hammer one all the way down. Wilson comes out of his net, plays it in front of the goal line, and sets it up on a tee for Jared Yao. Yao with seven assists so far on the year. No goals yet for number four dressed in yellow. 
Anytime that you can just have somebody who's a number one passer, you're going to take appreciative of it. A team first guy. Yao now with the puck. Gives it back over for just so. Trying to go cross size. It gets blocked on the way through by Thompson. Black Bears trying to escape harm, and they do. Jamie Bussell with Austin Thompson. If Thompson can hurry, Bussell saucers it a little bit too far out ahead of Thompson. No shot will come of it. But the penalty is over. Nikita Ivashkin out of the box in the Danbury power play. Yet to strike tonight as Jasso, though, comes back even straight. Wrist shot saved by, by McVeigh. Now D'Angelo chops at it. Kirkby, soccer style, puts it inside the blue line off the linesman. That kind of worked out for the Black Bears. But D'Angelo has his stick impeded legally. And now one on two for Tristan Mock. That's played legally with a hand in the defensive zone for the Black Bears. Cross ice pass for Jurek. Her one pass it to himself. And wrap it all the way around. D'Angelo now plays a soft hit on a Danbury hat trick below. And Mock puts on a tight turn. Almost turned the puck over to D'Angelo, who was pinching down. Kirkby holding the blue line now. Matched up with Pamela on. And two-on-two -two battle, but nobody down low for the Black Bears. And Binghamton does the smart thing, gapping up and not letting Marshan be the low man, as this is no icing. McVeigh thought it was. Pamela on centering pass out in front. Soccer style to the blade from Mock. And now Danbury throws the puck out of their own offensive side. And McVeigh didn't know that was an icing, Alex, but got really lucky. Got bailed out at the last second by his leg, making the kick save. Yeah, it Brooks, it was a tough save for McVeigh. He's got to realize there, look for the icing call, see that it's waved off, and he can't allow himself to be tricked like that as we have a Patrick player make a diving save of his own. Abdullah had lost his edge, and Colin Fitzgerald looked to have a pass to the net, but a last desperation rat check from Abdullah kept Fitzgerald at bay now. And now Jerks down low, matched up against Abdullah. And those two will get acquainted with the plexiglass in between. And Pamela on now with it on his forehand, backhand behind the net, steers it backwards, but Yardwood first to play it. Pawed down now by Abbott. Abbott crosses the center line, two on two, Bussell. Trying to get to the forehand, a backhand going for the top shelf, just high of the crossbar. And Mock will self-pass it to himself. Yarwood will just wrap it back to Lewis. A good play to negate the opportunity, though. The Black Bears getting pressured on by the Hattricks now on the forecheck. Lewis throws it cross ice over to Abbott. Stretch pass. Abbott does a good display of stick handling. Now Bussell. Bussell trying to get it in the slot. And Binghamton a little bit too cute on the stick handling to get a shot off. And now the Hattricks come away with possession of the puck. They throw it all the way out. Look out, Shahan wrist shot wide of the target. McVay might have got a piece of it with his toe, but now Binghamton can go three on two, but Gavin Abbott left it back at the blue line. Ruiz slap shot and melted down by McVay. No further play. I'll tell you what, Dustin Jusot. Hold that thought, Alex. We're going to go to commercial. Fox 1430 has more coming up with Binghamton Hockey after these messages. Welcome back to the action. You've been listening to Binghamton Hockey on Fox 1430. And before we so rudely interrupted Alex Jones with his thought, Alex, go ahead. I'll tell you what, Brooks. Dustin Gisso had a beautiful head seat play. He allowed his player to come off the ice for a change. It was currently four with five on for the Black Bears. He saw the Black Bears about to jump, about to dump it. Hops out the bench, grabs the puck, plays in an offensive zone for a quick three on two. Face off one by the hat tricks, and now Yao with it on his stick. He has it blocked by Schultz. Schultz has to watch out with that stick that's parallel near the hands. Binghamton doesn't need to take any more penalties. They need to hope that they get the next one in their favor. Matu Boilar over skates it in, and now Kuznetsov with it in the high slot. Turnaround shot, and he scores. Four to two, Danbury off the offensive zone face off. The Black Bears just couldn't get to the puck, and Danbury now back up by two. Yeah, Kuznetsov just grabbed the puck. There was a little bit of a misunderstanding in the defensive zone. It left the forward on the backside of that wide open. 
Both defenders didn't exactly know what to do there, and Kuznetsov takes advantage of that indecision, buries it in the back of the net. 13-10 left to go as you get a look on the high energy replay and top shelf for 77 dressed in orange tonight, and that's Dmitry Kuznetsov, and now Gino D'Angelo puts on a stop, but he's gonna get wrapped away at the last second by Luke Richards. And Boylar throws a wrist shot blocked on the way through by Richards. Referee had blown it down. They thought it went out of play. It got swallowed up by Richards' equipment. And this will be an offensive zone faceoff coming up for Binghamton. You really, it's going to be interesting how the Binghamton Black Bears respond. They're down 4 2. Kuznetsov with a beautiful scoring chance there, buries it in over the blocker of McVay. And let's see how this top line for the Binghamton Black Bears responds. Kuznetsov with his fifth goal of the season. As D'Angelo now the centerman on this power, or it's not power play unit, this top line. And D'Angelo tried to win it back. It's going to be batted out of the zone by Dan Barry. Schultz, though, will be the first man to it. Throws it off the boards indirectly, and Schultz will just chop at it. Wilson will backhand it, and Kirkby right in, in spot, but back down low. In this period so far, Binghamton not being able to generate really any offensive chances yet. They only have one shot on goal to show for it, while Danbury has eight, and they have a goal up on the board as well. D'Angelo now skates away with the puck, tries to skate around two men. Danbury will be first to it. Gonzalez, though, will just softly push it ever so slightly over to John McDonald, and McDonald crosses the line on sides, throws a centering pass out for McDonald, excuse me, for Pamelelon. And Pamelayon will get handcuffed. And now Binghamton, in the form of Lewis, will up the puck to Jurich. Jurich overskates it, and here will just go off for a change. And you can see the frustration starting to set in for 22, dressed in black. Kirby puts on a tight stop. It's a little bit of a stick infraction, nothing that the referee is going to call. Play down by a hand from Yardwood. Down low to Kirkby. Kirkby gets sealed on the board, and Lewis knocks his man away from the puck. Yarwood pinching down from his defensive spot. Yarwood's done such a good job this year. Down low and Yarwood's gonna get a high hit. Mac Lewis takes exception to that. And it looks like nothing will come of it and nobody getting anywhere. And no, the officials getting good control of it. And it looks like head trainer Elise Wilbur will be making her way out onto the ice escorted by Gavin Abbott. I mean, Brooks, if you're going to call the Ivashkin one, you, you've got to call that roughing as well. That was high in the head, put it Yarwood's head into the boards. I, I just don't see if you're going to call it one way, call it the other way. Fair is fair, 100%. If you're going to call roughing on, on Ivashkin for a higher hit, that's the same for Yarwood. Hopefully Yarwood's okay here. It just uh, maybe got caught with a stick or something like that, but I just don't see it. 11.13, excuse me, 11.30 left to go here. Danbury finds themselves up by two and Yarwood appears to be getting up. That's a good sign. And skating off in his own power to the bench. Gotta love the toughness from Yarwood and we'll see how the Black Bears respond here. Now they're down by two again. They were down by two in the first period when Danbury scored three goals in a row after the Black Bears were on the board first. Yeah, it, 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 Brooks, it's going to be interesting to see how they respond. 11.30 left in the period. you got to up your goals. You only had one shot on goal for the Black Bears. you got to step that up. you got to really get the puck in the zone and start cycling. They're trying to get the puck deep and play around the edges, and Danbury's just cutting them off at every turn. Let's see if they can react. Well, this is a little bit of a wake-up call. Looks like Dollar's actually headed to the box. The referees got together with each other, and they might have taken the peek up at the video board. And Brendan Dowler headed to the penalty box and the Binghamton power play, which is realistically one for one on the night, not counting all the coincidental penalties that put it to four on four, gets another opportunity to cut into this lead. This is the perfect opportunity for the Binghamton Black Bears who have looked very good on their power play so far this season. They got to get the ball in, get it up top to your quarterback, let them cycle it, play it through and get some shots on net. Excited to see what the Black Bears can do here with a big draw in their win in their own zone. Schultz comes back out on the ice temporarily. Yardwood will hop right back on the ice, so it appears that Yardwood is okay. Dan Barry, after the first shot, will glide it out to neutralize. Wilson made an easy saves, and now the power play will have to enter into the zone. And now Yardwood, head of steam. Yardwood trying to get around Gonzalez, and Wilson 
will melt it down. Face off coming up to the right of the goaltender. Uh, the Black Bears are doing a good job of creating uh, some space in the neutral zone for them to move. As when the hat tricks are on five on five play, they're one of the toughest teams in this league to move the puck on through the off uh, through the neutral zone, and we've been seeing it tonight, Brooks. That we have, Alex. The official penalty is a Brendan Daller two-minute minor for boarding as Kirkby holds the blue line, trying to get it to Bussell, but the first man to it, it will be Evan Lugo, who will just slap it all the way down the ice, and so far the power play, not with a clean look after an initial face-off win in the zone and shot put on. And Kirkby skating across center ice with it. A lot of guys dressed in orange on the same side of the ice. Black Bears need to find an open lane as Mac Lewis almost impedes his own teammate and former college teammate in Kirkby. Now Bussell with it. Kirkby calling for it at the top of the umbrella. Bussell down low now for Yarwood. Back up in the faceoff dot. Those two will trade places. Bussell goes around the net and gives it up for Jurich. Holding the inboard is Bussell and Jurich. Kirkby now trading places with Bussell. Gets it down low to Jurich. Jurich throws a wrist shot. Easily saved by Wilson, who did a good job of hugging the post, though. Bussell, first man to it, holds it in the blue line, trying to get a member of the hat tricks to follow and maybe try to force the defense to rotate. 30 seconds left to go in the penalty. A booming slap shot put on by Kirkby and a rebound from Yarwood through the blue paint and out. Now Jurch with it. Binghamton still in control. Slap shot put on by Yarwood. 20 seconds left to go, and now the chances are coming for Binghamton. Bussell behind the net. Drawing the eyes of two men. Yarwood, wrist shot, deflected high above the goaltender. It escapes the zone. One final push for the Black Bears. Five seconds in the penalty, and Dowler is coming out. Schultz now with it at center ice, and the Black Bears penalty, or excuse me, the Black Bears power play comes up empty-handed. Stretch pass now, two on one for Danbury, Ruiz, and Marshan. Long play and a big save on Marshan from McVeigh. Uh, a huge effort there from uh, Nikita Ivashkin as well in the defensive zone, laying out for that puck, really eliminating the passing lane. Dan Barry keeps it in temporarily at the blue line. They give it up for Boylar. Parker tries to indirect it. Nobody home for the Black Bears. This could be dangerous as Ruiz has its skate on his stick. Yarwood, excuse me, that's Parker, not Yarwood, gets tied up with his man out in front. That's Gonzalez. Partial breakaway. McVeigh makes another save. Marshan and Parker, 88, getting together, and a penalty coming up against Brett Parker. Saw that one coming from a mile away, Alex, and cross-checking against Brett Parker. Yeah, you can't, unfortunately, if you're Parker there, you can't have that. He's shown the numbers to you. He's been over. That's going to be a clear boarding call on Parker. Unfortunately, those stop, those numbers show you got to throw that stop sign. Danbury on top by two, and they're headed to the power play once again. Black Bears trying to generate a little bit of offense in the final moments of their power play, but he comes up empty-handed. More special teams coming up after these messages. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 1430 in Binghamton. Black Bear fans, this buzz for you. Each and every day, Budweiser works hard towards the high bar that they set for themselves, earning their position as the king of beer. They are sponsoring the three stars of all of the Black Bears games all season long. Enjoy an ice cold Budweiser on the concourse inside the arena or visit your local vendor today. Budweiser, the king of beers and proudly brewed right here in the United States since 1864. Now back to more Black Bears hockey on Fox Sports 1430 Binghamton. Welcome back to the action. It'll be a cross-checking call to Brett Parker that sends the Danbury power play back out on the ice. They are 0 for 3 as it stands right now, but all it takes is one to get it going. And one could be the dagger here tonight for the Black Bears as you don't want to be down by three to Danbury. As Newberg does such a good job at defensive zone faceoffs, wins it back to himself, and he sent down to the ice. Crowd's looking for a cross-checking call. They're not going to get one as Luke Richards appears to be shaken up behind the play. I think the Russian judge gave that one a 9.2, Brooks. 8.20 left to go here as the hat tricks will just dump it in. Allow Walters to be the first man to it. Throw it all the way down and Wilson will have to stick handle as Gavin Abbott is the first man behind the net. And her set it up on a tee for Jared Yao. 
The Black Bears have been keeping the pressure all through the neutral zone and their offensive zone against the hat tricks on the penalty kill. Doing a very good job. D'Angelo will collect the loose change and just backhand it out of the zone once again. About halfway gone through for, through this penalty and nothing generating so far for Danbury. 7.45 left to go here in the period. And now they're change up some bodies, see if that will spark the engines a little bit. Jake Schultz will be the first man to it off of the high glass, but it's knocked down legally with a hand. Tyson Kirby, though, will just backhand it out of the zone all the way down the ice. And another good clear by the Black Bears defensively now on the Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill. Yeah, Yuri Haida did not like he got a little check there in the defensive zone. Took a bit of an exception to it. Good wrap check by Kirkby that time, and it looks like it was D'Angelo that time throwing it out of the zone. And that allows D'Angelo to get off the ice. Kirkby looked over towards the bench, not it, didn't get caught in the best of spot to get off the ice right there. Boilar chasing his man. A good toe drag, but no quarter given by Matthew Boilar inside the faceoff dot who will glide it down the ice. And in seven seconds, Brett Parker will be coming out of the penalty box. Excellent penalty kill by the Black Bear Brooks. They did not allow the hat tricks any time in the offensive zone and really forced their hand. Penalty is killed, and Yarwood trying to toe drag around a defender in the offensive zone. Pamela on though, well, with a tight turn in the faceoff dot, gets into the high slot. A wrist shot, McVeigh didn't see that one, but he made the save. Now down low for Lugo. Lugo turn around McVeigh. Holds everything as tightly as he can and no further play with 621 left to go in this one. The Black Bears penalty kill goes four for four so far. Yeah, Marsh, Marshawn and McVeigh didn't know where that puck was. McVeigh froze, started to slide, thinking he was underneath them and just decided to completely kill it. Make sure Marshawn didn't get a free one in front of the net. Set face off for Danbury as Pemeleon in the perfect one-timer spot and right off the face-off, Jamie Bussell is taken down. Gavin Abbott and Marshan getting reintroduced and a big hit from Bussell. But Brendan Dowler staying on his feet. Mac Lewis pins up his man against the board. Bussell, the former Utica pioneer, will be the first man to it. Boy Lar now skating behind his own net, crosses the blue line. Running out of real estate is Boy Lar, but the play is still on side. Bussell throws a wrist shot on Wilson was already drifting to the other side. Abbott now with it down low. And Mac Lewis giving it right back to Abbott who's in the corner. Here do his best World Cup impersonation and soccer style that one to an open spot. Mac Lewis with a good rap check, but the Black Bears trying to find the puck. Bussell plays it down legally. He takes a heavy hit from Marshan, but it's out of the blue line. They have to tag up and a heavy hit right into the curved glass. And Mac Lewis just grabs a hold of Brendan Dowler and throws Dowler down. And those two are going to tussle as Gavin Abbott absolutely was slammed into the curved glass. And Mac Lewis took exception to that. Yeah, you, you go over to see that from a guy like Mac Lewis. Uh, Downer took a, took a uh, rode him down the boards into the curved glass. Just an unfortunate part of hockey. However, you love to see that. Mac Lewis sticking up for his guys. Taking a penalty here, but you know what? That's the type of penalty you look for. It fires the boys up, gets them going, and you learn. It, it feels like we're building something to Brooks. It just feels like it's building and building and building, and we're going to crescendo here. That was a tight one along the boards there. It was a clean hit on the letter of the rule, but you never like to see guys go into that curved area of the ice. Normally, people lay off when they get to that part of the bench. It was a it was a tough hit. It was a tough hit. I do respect Mac Lewis for going after that one and showing him that we you're not going to mess with our guys. They have two minutes up on the board for Mac Lewis and the power play for the Hattricks is headed right back out onto the ice. And Alex, we thought that the Black Bears were going to get a power play this period, but they did get it. They were unsuccessful. And now Danbury with another power play opportunity. They're 0 for 4, and you can only keep them at bay for so long. Coming out of it, it's a two-on-one for the Black Bears. Tyson Kirby with Gino D'Angelo. Backhander at the last second, but a save made by Wilson. Fitzgerald does a good job of keeping it in, and look out, two on one, coming the other way, but a good job for Kirkby to get back, turning it into a three on two. Kirkby stays on his edges and just elevates it out to center ice, and it'll be five minutes left to go here in the second period. Danbury up by two, and now 90 seconds of power play time. Great job clearing the puck there by the Black Bears. 
keeping them, um, uh, Danbury on their toes and forcing them, not allowing them to get a single opportunity in the offensive zone. Walters will chip it ahead past Gonzalez and Parker trying to create a shorthanded opportunity. Comes up unsuccessful and Bottle now looking for a centering pass to a streaking man right down the middle. Brendan Shahan was wide open. Black Bears got to find their guy or find their zone rather as they're playing man down right now. Kuznetsov shot in the slot, denied and Thompson throws it all the way down to Wilson. 50 seconds left to go in the penalty as Parker trying to bluff the goaltender into a turnover is unsuccessful. But he is successful in taking some more time off the clock as Shahan crosses the line on sides trying to get around Haida. And it's over the shoulder of McVeigh right into the stick of Austin Thompson. Thompson with a goal already tonight. Will sidestep Gonzalez. He's the first man to it down low. Tried to pin it up against the board. He missed it with his foot. And now Josh Newberg, the extra forward tonight, getting some shorthanded time. And this pass right on the line. Linesman says no, it's still on sides. Crowd doesn't like it, but it's not going to change his mind. Haida and Mott get acquainted with each other out in front as Newberg ties it up in the corner. This is fine for the Black Bears as time will come off the clock. Newberg makes his way down to the ice, but now it's back at the blue line. And a wrist shot high of the target from McDonald as it had just so in the blue paint. Nobody home. Mac Lewis out of the box, and the Danbury power play now 0 for 5 on the night. Schultz with it all the way over to Bussell, trying to one-up it to himself. He couldn't find it. It escapes the grasp of the captain. Newberg has to be the first man back to it as Jake Schultz will center it right out in front of his own net. That's always dangerous. Up pass for Mac Lewis, who will skate off, and Jamie Bussell will have nobody to pass to for the time being is the first man to it. Puts on a tight turn, good display of stick handling from Bussell. Down low, out in front, a little wide of the net from Tyson Kirkby. And too much that it comes all the way out of the offensive end. Slap shot put on, and Wilson will play it legally. Down D'Angelo though, centering pass out in front now. Coming back, power move, nobody home. Needed a little bit more to get to the blue paint on the opposite side of the far post. And here comes Lugo. Lugo gets separated from the puck by Boylar. No shot coming off off of the stick of Cody Gibbs. Haven't seen a ton of him tonight, but that's gonna be icing coming up against the Black Bears. I don't know if I agree with that one, Brooks. He made an attempt to play for it, but you gotta respect the on-ice officials. They're the ones who are right there seeing the action. If it was an icing, it's an icing. Take a quick timeout, come back, 2.22 left to go here in tonight's contest. You're listening to Binghamton Hockey on Fox Sports 14.30. To more Black Bears hockey on Fox Sports 1430, Binghamton. Black Bears win the faceoff off of the icing, and it's kept in the zone, though, at the blue line by the hat tricks. As now just so trying to put a wrist shot on, a yawning net. McVeigh scrambling to get back. A great stick by D'Angelo forces the puck out of the zone with just over two minutes left to go. Danbury has to tag up on the delayed offside. Schultz can take a second, catch his breath and start the breakout. Boylar tries to backhand it all the way for Jurich, and that's just a high risk play, low reward. That takes a lot to backhand it all the way out of your own end to a player down on the ice. Just so, and Boylar getting acquainted with each other. Down low, and Yao, wide open net for the one-timer, and Kuznetsov has his second of the night. And the Black Bears couldn't get the breakout started, and it gets costly as they turn it right over, and Danbury grabs another goal. Yeah, Brooks, that's an unfortunate goal. Kunetsov buries in the back of the net. It, the Black Bears just got caught sleeping watching the puck there. It got over to Kunetsov across the ice as his defense compacts down, goes up from the defense, bottom left corner, 
and it's just a great play by the hat tricks. And because Kuznetsov is a right-handed shot, that one's put back in the after. He's a lefty. That's likely not a goal. Black Bears now find themselves down by three, and they will be content to get to the locker room as quickly as possible and regain in the final 90 seconds. Goal officially will be for Dmitry Kuznetsov, and this play is going to be whistle dead. We'll have a center ice faceoff coming up with just over 83 seconds left to go. Jared Yao picks up the assist, and Dustin Jesso picking up his third point of the night with a secondary helper. Another even strength goal. All five of Danbury's goals come at even strength while their power play is 0 for 5 on the afternoon. You know, one thing I noticed, Brooks, about their power play, they run a traditional 2-3, two, two defensemen, three forwards, a really split uh, power play, whereas the Binghamton Black Bears have kind of adopted that 1-3-1-4 one, one, forwards on the ice we see at all levels of hockey now. Soccer style pass, Parker to Ivoshkin is detected by Danbury, and now the Black Bears with control of the puck with a final minute left to go here in the second period. Shots on goal are Danbury 30, Black Bears 20. And Black Bears just seem really cannot get anything going five on five this period in the Danbury end. Danbury in control of the puck right now, but Thompson has control over here. Backhanded to Parker, but Parker overskates it just a smidge and a one-on-one. -on -one. Johnny Ruiz against Cam Yarwood. And Ruiz with nobody to pass to will just try to throw it into a corner. Ivoshkin now will up it to Thompson. Thompson trying to give it over to Parker. This would be icing, but it's on sides, and Parker's first man to it. Trying to give Dowler a rough ride is Parker. Now Ivoshkin loses his stick and trying to lay a heavy hit. But this would be icing coming up against Danbury. Seven seconds left to go here. One, time for one offensive zone faceoff. Yeah, Brooks, this is a big opportunity for the Black Bears. You got tired Danbury line out there, real tired legs. If you can get them in this, set up a good draw, get some fresh legs on the ice, and really go after them here, this is a good opportunity for a goal. You're right in front of the net. Let's see if they can deliver. Mac Lewis trying to win the faceoff back. It's played out of the air by Bussell. And that's going to be the end of the period. All hat tricks in period number two, as they now lead by a count of five to two. And the Black Bears leisurely skating off of the ice. And Danbury hanging around a little bit, just maybe trying to stir the pot a little bit more, which they do so well. They get in your head, and now the Black Bears will make their way off to the ice. And we will make our way to commercial as well. Danbury five, Binghamton two. The Black Bears have their work cut out for them coming up in the third period. Don't go anywhere, folks. It's the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report coming up once again after these messages. You're listening to Fox 1430 in Binghamton. Hockey fans, the Black Bears are back in town next Friday and Saturday. That's December 2nd and 3rd for 7 o'clock showdowns against the Watertown Wolves. Come enjoy a weekend of Black Bears hockey and cheer on your favorite team. Get your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com or call the office at 607-722-7367. Fans, the Binghamton Black Bears are having a special Black Friday sale. 15% off all merchandise and apparel for one day only, November 25th. You have to act fast. Use code BBFRIDAY at checkout and save 15% off of your total purchase. So make sure on Friday you head over to BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Fans, this upcoming Cyber Monday, the Black Bears are having one of their best ticket deals of the entire season. For only $10, you can sit in select seats for any December home game. That's right, folks, any December home game in a select section just for $10. Call the office at 607-722-7367 or skate over to BinghamtonBlackBears.com. But hurry quick, this is a one-day-only offer. Now it's time to take a look back from the previous Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. Make sure to subscribe to the Binghamton Black Bears YouTube page so you can catch every show. Join us Tuesday, November 29th at 6 p.m. Come join myself, Brooks Hill, along with head coach Gary Gill and the entire Black Bears 2022 and 23 roster as we take a deep dive into the Black Bears season recaps this past weekend's game and look ahead to the future. Tully's on the Vestal Parkway, home of the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. We cannot wait to see you out there. 
Welcome back in for another edition of the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. And now I'm joined by a Black Bears goaltender, number 31 and number one sometimes, Riley McVay, all the way from Calgary, Alberta. And Riley, thanks for you, for you uh, spending some time with us here on a Tuesday night. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Well, um, let's go ahead and just deep dive right into it. I assume with being from Calgary, uh, you know, the battle for Alberta, always big at the national level. I would assume that you are a big Flames guy. Is that safe to say? Yeah, yeah, I definitely uh, battle over Alberta. I'll take the Flames every time. So Okay, all right. Well, that's good. Just sometimes you just have to ask and make sure. You know, I've met people in New York who cheer for Boston and people in Philadelphia who cheer for Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. It uh, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but you always want to be polite before you ask. And, Riley, you were able to uh, join the team late uh, this year, and you've been able to make a couple of starts now. You made your first start in Danbury uh, a couple of weeks ago, and you had a amazing performance coming off of the bench in Elmira in just your second game of the season. And now you finally have your first weekend at home under – wraps and behind you and let's just go ahead and talk about that what was it like playing at home versus playing on the road yeah obviously playing at home in front of your home fans is uh is a lot better than playing on the road and you can kind of go through your own routines at the rink and everything's set up there and have everything that you need so um and it's great playing in front of the fans here we have awesome fans here and uh yeah it was a really fun experience for my uh first two games it was a back-to-back start for you and we've talked about conditioning and fatigue all throughout with coach Gill with Tyson Mm -hmm. everything like that now as a goaltender a lot of times you don't see guys play on back-to-back days but talk about what you do to help make sure that your body's in the right shape to where you can play two nights in a row if need be yeah I think a lot of it's just kind of making sure throughout the week that you're taking care of your body um, so that when this this time does come that you are kind of prepared to um, and then obviously just before and after, just making sure that you're stretching out and doing everything necessary. If something's egging you, just make sure you take care of it that night. And um, I always like to get to the rink kind of the next day and a little stretch out and mobility. So just kind of get ready for the next night. You know, I did notice that on Saturday when I went through the locker room dropping off some pieces of paper uh, for the guys, maybe who just wanted to check the box score from the night before or anything like that, that you were already laying there on the ground with the foam roller and uh, you were in some motions that I cannot make myself, <laughs> but I guess that's why you play goalie and I wear a suit. So it was just something for everybody at home to see that, you know, Riley is one of those guys first to the rink and making sure that he stretches out um, because, you know, with goalies, essentially you have to be the most flexible person on the team you go a lot more east to west than anybody else does and you know there's always a case of injury um you know in the lower body particularly you know in the groin area if you try to kick off you don't hit the post all those kind of things and coach reynolds was very complimented of you in the tully's coach's corner pregame on saturday afternoon he was talking to me about how well you move east to west and we've talked about it with owen and joe a little bit earlier in the season but some people might just think that the goalies are there, you know, just to be almost like practice dummies and like, oh, just stop the puck. What are some things that goalies are working on in practice that might not get seen from someone who maybe just comes by, stands on the glass or, you know, sees a clip on Twitter or Instagram? Yeah, I mean, there there is a lot that kind of goes behind it. And uh, just the difference between me, Owen and uh, Chef, we all are very different styles. Um, so we all have things that we have to work on ourselves to make sure that, we can play to the highest of our abilities um but it's just like the small things um just technical work and uh, you know a lot of footwork and and around the net and whatnot so um for me like a couple of things that i especially with my size i try to get to the top of the crease as much as i can and make sure that i am kind of presenting myself making myself big and then um obviously my mobility uh just being a shorter guy too i try to make up to it with my speed like you said going east to west um so those are just kind of things you work on in practice whether that be before after or even during practice sometimes so um you just kind of find what you you have to work on and you know as a goalie what what your strengths and weaknesses are so you had 26 saves in night number one on friday and then you had 30 saves in night two and you guys were doing a good job offensively um on really all, all of the nights. You put a ton of shots on goal. Shots on goal. Friday night were 27, but on Saturday night it became 48. 
And is it sometimes easy to lose focus for just a second when you, your guys are having so much offensive zone time and you're not seeing a whole lot of shots in a period? What does a goalie do to like stay like mentally locked in and be like, okay, like the puck could literally come down here at any second or you know, I have to make a save or I'm going to have to skate out of the crease and make a play on it? Yeah, that's definitely uh, a part of the hockey for a goalie that's tough, especially when your team's putting up a ton of shots in the other end and you're kind of just waiting there. Um, I'd say the biggest thing is you just try to stay uh, just mentally checked in, just following the puck and just being ready for the next shot because obviously, like you said, at, at any moment that puck can come down and, and when it does, it happens quick. So, uh, yeah, you just kind of, even if there's kind of a lull there for five or ten minutes, which there was at the start of the game, I, I do remember looking up at the shots and at one point I think it was 12 or 13 to 3. So we put we put up a ton of shots there the first uh, half of the first, and uh, you just you know try to follow the puck and stay kind of most focused as you can. You know, I had a friend who played club hockey or travel hockey in high school back down in North Carolina, and he always said that he would do like math equate like he would give himself like math problems. And yeah, and the thing was is like he was in the same level math that I was like we're not in like me and him are not in advanced like upper level math like we're doing the basic stuff here and he's like oh yes you know if you know you're doing good like sometimes like if you stumped yourself because you're really thinking about it and it forces your brain to you know I guess like stay that like mentally active and you're not essentially you know picking picking dandelions out in right field uh to use a baseball expression there uh you noticeably came out of the net a lot of times to play the puck whether you steer it back on your backhand or you elevate it across the glass Talk about what happens when a goalie needs to leave the net and make a play on it. Like, what are the things that you're looking for? Are you trying to just get it away from the net as far as you can? Or is it like, oh, like, hey, like, I'm actually trying to, you know, go off the glass and drop it right at somebody who's going to be there? Or, you know, okay, like, they're calling for it this way. I'm just going to pass it back and maybe try to get in the way, like, intentionally, non-intentionally set a pick on a guy coming through. Yeah, I think that the, the biggest thing for a goaltender when playing the puck is you just got to take kind of a look up ice when you first uh, when it's first coming down, kind of scan the ice, see what's coming at you. And then from there, you kind of make your decision to see what their four check is and what players you have coming back. Uh, so I know like in a few instances last, uh, last game there where there was hard pressure on and really the only play you have is to rim it up the glass and and hope to get it out, but um, if obviously if I can make a play, um, I'd prefer to make just that simple five, ten foot pass to the defenseman, and then uh, ha let them have a clean breakout from there. So I think the biggest thing is just scanning up ice and seeing what's coming at you from uh, our team and from their team. When you keep your head up, good things happen. That's what I'm told across any sport. When you're looking down at your feet, one, especially in hockey, that's when that tends to mean that you're going to end up with your backside on the ice at some point. Hopefully not for you um, as a goalie. And uh, First time for the Black Bears in a shootout this season, and Coach talked about it, about how you guys work on some shootout style, one-on-none or one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender. Um, what's the mindset for a goalie? Because I've heard at with some teams the coach gives the decision to the home goalie. Uh, whether they want to shoot first or second. Did you have any input? Did you say, like, hey, I want to go first, like, I want to have the chance to make a save, or is it, I really don't care what we do? Um, t to me, it doesn't matter. Uh, my mindset still stays the same. I just got to stop the puck. Rather, we go first or second, and obviously I can't control the other the other part of that. But um, to me, I, I like when we shoot uh, when we shoot second there because then we, we're kind of more in control uh, to win the game. Uh, but, yeah, to me, it doesn't really doesn't really affect me too much. I just try to keep keep my mind on that one thing, stop the puck. I've always been a fan of letting my t or hoping that my team shoots second. Um, you know, I watch a ton of Carolina Hurricanes games, and the first year that they had Rod Brendamore, I believe they actually had a streak of winning ten consecutive like ten consecutive shootouts uh, in a row because they practiced shootout stuff so much in practice. But they was like, okay, we always want to go second because that means we're going to have the last shot. Um, and the last opportunity either to tie it, send it to another round, or they can walk it off. Uh, unfortunately for the Black Bears, losers in the shootout for the first time this season, they now are 1-1, one and one, and when the game goes to overtime, and now 0-1 oh in shootouts. And we talked about the film sessions earlier this week. What are things that you're looking for as a goaltender uh, in the film session? Are you looking at your positioning in between the pipes? Are you coming out enough to challenge and take away the angle? 
or is it more of okay hey like you're trying to learn tendencies from other players ahead of time like in a scouting report um, I think it's a little bit of both. Obviously, uh, when we did video this week, I saw uh, many things in my game that I need to improve on and that I can do, uh, If whether that be you know, getting, getting an up depth or just on certain plays, how to play the situation. Uh, but I think it's a little bit of both because you definitely want to watch the other teams that you're playing coming up and kind of see what their tendencies are. And uh, that kind of helps you prepare for the week and know what you're going to get into that weekend. That's the voice of Black Bears goaltender uh, Riley McVeigh, and Riley, I gotta ask: after playing two straight days and you know seeing over 50 shots combined between the two nights, what was Sunday like for you on the body? Was it a little taxing? Uh, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't uh, it wasn't horrible, but uh, Sundays, you know, nice relaxing day. Watch some football, and then uh, just get back to work on Monday. Okay, so being from Calgary, we already know that you're a Flames guy. When you say watching football, what's the football team that you cheer for the most? Uh, Raiders. I'm a big Raiders fan. So, okay. How, yeah. do you, how do you feel about the move to Las Vegas out of Oakland? Um, it's, not, it's not the black hole anymore. It's not the same uh, crowd intensity, but uh, I was able to make it down to Las Vegas last year with my buddy to catch a game and uh, quite the stadium and quite the experience. So oh. uh, it was a lot of fun. Absolutely. The Davis family spent a whole lot of money. Uh, out there in Las Vegas. If you're looking to install a beautiful, durable, and handcrafted countertop, call Atlas James Construction. The Southern Tier's most trusted stone fabrication will design and install your dream countertop and let you choose from a premium selection of natural stones like marble, granite, or quartzite. Stone or granite countertops starting as low as $35 per square foot installed. Schedule your free quote and receive a free sink with your countertop project. Call 607-275-5000. Getting your hands on an all-new CF Moto side-by-side or four-wheeler is now easier than ever at ExciteMotorsports.com. Purchase your next power sports vehicle with our new, easy, and quick online buying experience. Browse inventory on ExciteMotorsports.com. Buy. Get approved for financing and e-sign online right from your phone. Ride. Have your new power sports vehicle delivered to your home the next day at no extra charge. Browse. Buy. Ride. Fun starts here at ExciteMotorsports.com. Whether you're a high school or college athlete or a weekend warrior, Guthrie is the area's premier sports medicine program, offering injury evaluation, concussion management, physical therapy, and more. With a full team of providers across New York and Pennsylvania offering same or next day appointments, Guthrie gets you back in the game as quickly as possible. Call the Guthrie Sports Medicine team today at 866-GUTHRIE or learn more.
has come back from down three earlier this year. Playing with some energy early, Brooks connecting a few passes up through the mid zone, and they just need one more there to get into a scoring chance. Her shot trying to go all the way down the ice on the clear attempt from Richards. Schultz will knock it down, and he gets a rough ride. Partially given and received right at the penalty box gate in front of the off-ice officials. Jurich trying to come up with a turnover in the offensive end as Danbury is having a hard time with the fresh ice getting it out of their own side. They're trying to get it down low to Jurich, and the puck is going to be up out of the zone one-on-one -on -one as Jasso now with already three points tonight with three assists, searches for his first goal. Ida does a good job of standing his ground, and a deep pass over to Kirkby is in his skates, not on his stick. Ends up in a turnover, and the hat tricks take right back over. And though a little bit of miscommunication, the Black Bears trying to get a little bit lucky this time, but it'll be the hat tricks giving it up for Marshan, but it's off sides, and this one's coming back. Yeah, Boussel did a great job back checking there and eliminating um, on the attack. It was just a great job by Boussel getting out in front and really getting after Dustin just so there where he had a good one-on-one -on -one opportunity and uh, Boussel checked back and made sure that wasn't a good one. Classic chicken and the egg situation. The crowd wants to get back into this game. They want something to cheer about from the Black Bears and the Black Bears want to get the crowd back into it so maybe that they can get a little bit of adrenaline and put something in the back of the net. It looked like one of the Members of the hat tricks might have gotten clipped with a high stick Dowler, on the I way through. Brooks. Dowler looked like he spit out his mouthpiece. Ivoshkin tries to get the puck, but it's off of the linesman. That's not going to make the crowd any more happy than what they already are tonight with the officiating. Passing the slot is too hard to be attained by Mock, but three on two. Walters now throws a wrist shot, and maybe everybody thought he was going to pass it the way he opened up his body and he flipped his hips. Ivoshkin giving Mock a little bit of a nudge right in front of the Danbury bench, and Ivoshkin uses a defenseman as a screen, trying to extend his goal-scoring streak to eight games. He has points now in the last eight. And we'll see what the Black Bears had to do is this is going to be no icing. Plays on sides. And Black Bears with the only shot so far through the first two minutes of the contest, of the period, rather. Played down legally by Mac Lewis, who gives a shoulder down to Gordy Bonnell. Uh, another wrist shot that's blocked on the way through by Lewis and a good back check by Lewis, forcing the turnover. One on one for Gavin Abbott. Hometown kid from Binghamton throws a wrist shot that's blocked on the way through by Yao. Newberg, first man to it, but he has a roll off his stick. But Ruiz will indirect it right back to Abbott. Wrist shot easily detected by Wilson, and Newberg does the smart thing, attacks the goaltender, and yeah, forces know, an offensive zone faceoff. Yeah, Brooks, you know, it, it is one of those old adages if you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. When you're down 5-2, you got to take some shots like that. Get the puck on the net. Good things are going to happen. I love that idea there. Turn around. Take a quick shot. Challenge his glove. Wilson hasn't had that many opportunities come after him today. False start against Kuznetsov from the wing. He's now going to be ushered into the faceoff dot. That, that looks to be the second or third false start by Kuznetsov today. And actually, Jasso will come out. Face off one by Kirkby. Turnaround shot by Jurich is blocked by Kuznetsov on the way through. And now Boussel gets taken down to the ice. Crowd again looking for a call, but none provided by the third team out on the ice. Turnover, though, right out in front on the stick of Kirkby. And a diving effort from Richards blocks it out in front. Looks like uh, Kirkby took a little bit of a stick there, almost a, an incidental spear on the back end of the stick into the ribs. Jasso skates across the blue line, trying to skate around the Black Bears, but Boylar does a good job of knocking the puck off at the last second. Jasso is shaken up on the ice, and the crowd will cheer about that. We're hoping Jasso is okay. You never want to see somebody hurt. Wouldn't be the Black Bears fans getting excited about somebody being injured. And Jasso appears to be getting up on his own power here, collect his stick off of the ice. 16.34 left to go. Yeah, it, Brooks, it, it was an unfortunate incident there. It just seemed like he got hit a little, he, right in the clean in the numbers, but just a little up in the board, rode hard in, and it, it's just an accidental thing there. Bumps his face off the glass. Uh, you hate to see when somebody goes down that. Luckily, he's able to get up, skate down to the other end of the ice. Has to come off for a play because once you go down, they swistle it. You got to come off, unfortunately. Black Bears with a offensive zone faceoff and a set play, but Thompson can't win it. 
He gets thrown back as Abdrella throws it cross ice. And now Evan Lugo thought about skating with it across center ice, but he has to give it up for his teammates. Now Thompson skating in, plays on sides, onto the back end from Thompson, trying to find Ivoshkin on the back end, but a little bit too far out in front. Lugo now skates across the line. This is delayed off sides, and the linesman laid on the whistle, and Haida gives his man a rough ride into the board, and Haida and Abdullah not in the same weight class, and Abdullah will just skate away. Yeah, I, I, it was a, it was a delayed call there. Haida plays through the whistle. The whistle hadn't yet blown, so he puts him into the boards thinking it was an onside play. Just an uh, unfortunate late whistle there. And Abdul coming up to him saying, hey, you can't do that to my teammate. Both sides showing that they're playing physical, but they're within the rules of the letter of the law. All five staying out on the ice for the Black Bears. And this time, Thompson will win the faceoff back. And it will be Jake Schultz now paired up with Haida. And Schultz now skates away over his own side. Side steps, a uh, hit coming from Gordy Bonnell, or Bonnell rather. And Brett Parker coming up with the turnover for Ivoshkin. Ivoshkin trying to give it for Thompson right in the slot. Thompson now back to Haida, throws a wrist shot that's blocked on the way through, kept in at the line. And teammates colliding out in front as Jared Yao got his own ankles tangled up with somebody's stick. Haida throws a wrist shot wide of the target, off the back of the net. Maybe looking for a tip back on the way through. Ivoshkin, though, trying to backhand it to the defenseman. Haida does a good job keeping it in once again. Play is hit into the open corner, and Ruiz has some words for a Haida on that hit afterwards. And now Danbury appears to be finally able to throw it out of their own end. Haida. Paws it down legally, but this is offsides against Binghamton. They have to touch up. I'll tell you what, Brooks. Haida is doing a great job of pinching the line, not allowing Danbury the free release, even when they clear the puck, putting it back into their own zone. This is icing against Danbury as they throw it all the way down the fresh sheet of ice. Almost five minutes gone. One second away from a TV timeout. And now maybe some tired bodies out there for Danbury. And it'll be line number two out for Binghamton. Yeah, I'm excited to see what this line of Abbott, Lewis, and, and can do. They're a high spark plug, high energy. Looks to be setting up something off on the right wing. Loses the draw, however. Played in, though, by Yarwood. Centering pass out for D'Angelo. Loses an edge right in the slot. That would have been the highest danger chance of the period for the Black Bears. And D'Angelo just gets unlucky and loses his edge and falls down to the ice. Now Abbott with it. He tries to one pass it to himself, but Danbury first to it. They up it for Jasso. Jasso gets around Walters. And now Yar with his stick on the ice, trying for the wraparound. Jasso skates around another Black Bear. McDonald throws a wrist shot that's easily blockered into the corner by McVeigh. That's the first shot of the period for Danbury. And a one timer and a big save made by McVeigh as they had a man coming right down the slot in Luke Richards. Puck still available. And now Josh Newberg skates out of harm. Looked to almost be a hook there, Brooks. I thought there was going to be a penalty, but a no call from the Zebras. Heavy hit laid on by Bussell. And Lugo not too happy about that one. That one also a clean hit. And Kirkby touches up, play is on sides, trying to get it over for Jurich, but a little bit too short of a pass. And now Fitzgerald and Boylar, as we've seen the defensive pairings get shuffled here a little bit in period number three. Jurich is going to be the high four checker. Boylar can't keep the line. This will be icing if it makes the line. And Danbury has to keep some tired bodies out on the ice. But we will step aside. When we come back, Danbury has a defensive zone faceoff that they're going to try to win. They have a three-goal lead. They lead 5-2 to two on Fox 1430 in Binghamton. Are you planning on traveling to Binghamton for an upcoming Black Bears game? If so, check out Lakeisha Inn and Suites by Wyndham for a night away from home. Lakeisha Inn and Suites is a short drive from the arena and is conveniently located off of the Southern Tier Expressway and Highway 17 with easy access to Interstate 81 and the Vestal Parkway. Lakeisha Inn and Suites by Wyndham at 581 Harry L. Drive, Johnson City. <laughs>
Now back to more Black Bears hockey on Fox Sports 1430 Binghamton. Welcome back to the action. Binghamton still finds themselves down by three, but icing against Danbury, and that TV timeout made it just giving those tired bodies a breath of fresh air. Top line out for Coach Gill and his Black Bears as Kirkby, no, that, excuse me, that is Bussell, wins it forward. Fitzgerald throws a wrist shot blocked on the way through by Kirkby. Centering pass, nobody's home, but Fitzgerald does a good job towing the line. Wrist shot in the high slot. Nobody available, though, for a tip. Poilar now poking down. He gets ran into by a member of the Hat Tricks. And now Danbury with the stretch pass. Now Marshan. Marshan goes behind his net and gets it stripped away by Boylar on the poke check. Jurich trying to be the first man to it. And he'll give it up for Jamie Bussell. Bussell now starting to fly out of the zone. Kirkby touches up. Play is on sides. Over to Jurich, but it's in his skates. Black Bears have had a couple in the blades tonight, but not on the toes of the stick right where you want them. Some golden opportunities make you wonder what if. Now the Black Bears touch back up. Jurich down low for Kirkby. Spin move out in front. And it's denied by Wilson as Kirkby gets floored into the net. Jay Hahn crosses the line. This is on sides and Lewis hits his man again. And a penalty coming up. And looks like we have a slashing call coming up against Danbury. Yeah, he uh Oh, Danbury, no, excuse me, a cross-check. Cross-check. Danbury player caught him up high, and you can see once the timber hit the ice, it's normally a sign that one of the orange bands will have their arm up announcing a penalty. Black Bears power play, and I dare say this is a must-score situation for Binghamton. Each team only three shots on goal in the period, Alex. And this is the first penalty of the period as well. Binghamton has their second power play unit out. Schultz and Boylar at the defense. Cross-checking penalty given to Brendan Shehan and now Boylar giving it back to Schultz and too soft and Johnny Ruiz with a partial breakaway. Boylar trying to come back, sends his man down to the ice and the power play is over for the Black Bears as Boylar Lost his positioning, and Johnny Ruiz draws a penalty just 15 seconds in. A short-lived opportunity for the Black Bears is now their power play will officially fall once again. Now effectively one for three on the night as that one gets wiped off of the board. That, that's an unfortunate penalty to Boilar there. It, it, while you like to see the tough defense, and uh, again, it, it, Ruiz gets his hand, kind of pinches the arm down, but they're going to call that 100 times out of 100 for a hold there in the offensive zone when you have a guy attacking on a semi-breakaway like that. Boylar's second penalty of the game. He had a hooking call go against him back in the first, but four-on-four four hockey now. Jake Schultz has a little bit of space to go. Power move. Wilson hulks the post, and it's going to be melted down. Offensive zone faceoff coming up for the Black Bears. Yeah, that's an unfortunate penalty, as I said previously, for Boylar. Kills that momentum, but again, Brooks, we're going to get into a chicken and egg. Is this e even man, or is this special teams? Let's see who comes out on top here. Thompson trying to win it forward, gets tied up by Evan Lugo, the centerman for the hat tricks, and now Danbury with control of the puck. Gonzalez skating in front of his own net a little gingerously, gets it taken away by Ivoshkin, wrist shot blocked on the way through. That's what Danbury's been so tough on the defense tonight. They are not allowing Binghamton to get a clean shot, even when they have opportunities. Ivoshkin playing a little bit of a pest here and on the four check, gets the puck away. And Ivoshkin just takes it right away, centering pass out in front. Danbury still trying to get back up to their skate blades on the ice and good full court pressure from Ivoshkin as this gets up all the way down into the Binghamton zone. Yarwood will just indirect it back for Jake Schultz who takes a look up. He takes one right on the elbow. Thought that one might have drawn a slash and a good toe drag by Schultz. Centering pass out in front. Yarwood hammers home through the five hole, but Wilson squeezes the legs tight and melts it once again. Excellent job by Schultz and Yarwood, the defensive pair there, to jump into the attack and force the end. Schultz coming over to talk to the officials in Orange. She just give him a little chat on maybe he saw something that the officials did not. And we have an offensive zone face off for the Binghamton Black Bears. The Black Bears are buzzing here really getting after it. It'll be interesting to see if they can finish one here. One thing I'm noticing, Alex, three forwards and one defenseman right now out on the ice for Binghamton. Bussell, Jurich, and Kirkby, the forwards. Yarwood, the only defenseman. Yarwood with a good crossover in his own end now, skating with it on his forehand. The lefty trying to drag around one man. 
And a member of Danbury goes down to the ice. And Yarwood now pinching in down low, and the Hattricks come away with the loose change. They take a look down the ice, trying to find a streaking Tristan Mock, who already has a goal tonight. That was goal number two for Danbury. First shot put on, and McVay will hug the post, make the save, with 10.43 left to go. Yeah, it was a great save by McVay. You've got a guy rushing at you with that kind of speed. He present a dangerous opportunity. McVay's able to squeeze it and just kill it for the off, uh, for the defensive zone faceoff for the Black Bears. Let's see if they continue that. We got Schultz, uh, Lewis, who's else out there? Brooke Abbott, and I can't see Abbott, who's on the Abbott, Schultz, board. Lewis, and it appears to be Fitzgerald. That's Colin Fitzgerald from Burr Ridge, Illinois. Now two defensemen out on the ice as the penalty to Danbury is about to be over, and they'll have a short abbreviated power play for 15 seconds. Now Mac Lewis can throw it all the way down the ice as Danbury gets out of the zone. Don't know if he knows that yet, but a good display of stick handling from the former Laker. He goes in by himself into the zone, and he's going to do the smart thing, just tied up against the board for the final seconds. Boylar up and running, coming out of the penalty box, and Danbury 0 for 6 now, effectively on the power play as Boylar skates all the way off. Yeah, even though that was an abbreviated power play, it was a very smart play by Lewis to kill that puck in the corner. A good, good show of gamesmanship there. Schultz knocks the helmet off of Brendan Shahan, and Shahan giving Schultz a little bit of an elbow on the way back over to the bench. Power play tonight. If you count them, by the way, they truly are. Danbury 0 for 6, and Binghamton 1 for 3. Heavy hit at neutral ice against Austin Thompson through the body. All numbers, though, on the back. Now Thompson trying to be the first man down to it against Jared Yao. Yao and Thompson get acquainted with each other right in front of the Alexander Cafe's advertisement, the proud sponsor of College Knights. Parker with it, trying to one-time it, but it hops a stick as the puck was rolling on its edge. Halfway through the period, Black Bears still down by three. Nobody breaking the ice yet this frame. Shots on goal in the period. Five for Danbury, four for Binghamton. And now the Black Bears get a takeaway in neutral ice. Aikita Ivoshkin, power move, a lot of space for Nikita, and a save made by Wilson. I'll tell you what, Nikita has been playing very well tonight. He seems very locked in in the offensive zone, creating a lot of offensive chances. Yarwood now skating with it. Here you just throw it into neutral ice for Ivoshkin. You have to think that Nikita is tired. Almost a turnover at the blue line. Chipped away, plays on sides. Great hand dive by Bussell. Backhand pass to Yarwood. Yarwood trying to drag around a defender, allow his teammates to change if possible. Tire bodies for both sides, paddled down by Wilson. That's a great play by the goaltender for Danbury to just knock it away from the forward down low in the blue paint. Yarwood just slides it down the ice, and Binghamton tries to get back on the four check with 8.20 left to go. What a great offensive play there by Bussell. Really creative, puts it between his legs where nobody's looking, and almost gets ends up in a Binghamton Black Bears goal. Jerich now with the puck. He will put on the brakes and halt. Cross ice pass for Haida. Haida throws a wrist shot. Initially let loose by the goaltender, but he will fall right on top of it with 8.05 left to go. We have our under 10 media timeout coming up. Fox 14.30, Danbury's up by three. Are you planning on traveling to Binghamton for an up? The Learning Ladder Child Care Centers are located in Endicott and Johnson City. They enroll children ages 6 weeks to 12 years old. Call 607-770-3806 for an appointment today to walk through one of their facilities. Come join their family and they will help your child grow. We want to thank the Learning Ladder for their continued support of Black Bears hockey. Eight minutes left to go in this one. Danbury still up by three. That's exactly how we went into the intermission. Nobody yet scoring in the period. A booming slap shot on a puck on in from Danbury in the corner. It's unattainable 
And Jasso does a good play, keeping it in the blue line temporarily. And now the Black Bears throwing the body around right in front of our Toyota friends. Dasher located in the corner by the Black Bears locker room. Kirkby trying to be the first one to it. He just does a one-hand poke at it, trying to push it past the defender. Boilar giving a rough ride by Jasso, but Boilar turned his head at the last second. And now Jurich tries to one-up it. And Black Bears almost getting caught with too many men right there. Haida does a good job holding the blue line. Temporarily gets it down low. Kirkby trying to locate the puck, but instead it finds the stick of Luke Richards. Haida and Dowler there shared some words, shared some physicality at the end of that play. I wonder if Dylan knows Chet. Wouldn't shock me if he knew some words. Now Lewis with a wrist shot that's blocked on the way through. 6.52 left to go. And now the puck gets into the trapezoid. Gavin Abbott, first man to it. Looking for a friend to pass to. He finds Lewis. Lewis will wrap it around the boards down low for Abbott as the Black Bears try to start a cycle. Abbott tied up in a backhander that got up in the air very quickly from Josh Newberg. Now Jake Schultz toad stepping around a man when Abbott not in the right spot that time to redirect a shot. Get it back down low for Newberg. Newberg's wrist shot is blockered away by the goaltender. He does the basketball thing and follow up his own rebound but lets his teammate Fitzgerald pick it up. And Lewis does a good job on the forecheck again. Heavy pressure now for the Black Bears this shift. Down low, Pamela on blocked the pass and now Wilson tried to reach out for it. And he will cover up, get those tired bodies off of the ice. And now we have a little bit of a tussle down low. Smart thing for the Black Bears is to not Looks drop like the Looks like we gloves. got some fisticuffs, Brooks. It's getting rough right before Thanksgiving. Yeah, excuse me, Mac Lewis and Cody Gibbs going at it with each other. And Mac Lewis will wrestle his man down to the ice. Normally we expect those kinds of things, Brooks, at uh, Best Buy parking lot in New Jersey rather than in uh, Veterans Memorial Arena. Day after Thanksgiving rather than the day before. Just like a couple of friends fighting over a PS5 out in line as Alex had to take a look at the Heinz Energy replay and Wilson melts it down. And Gibbs and Lewis getting tied up. And this might be an unpopular opinion, Alex. I think the smart thing there for the Black Bears is to keep the gloves on and maybe draw a penalty and go on the power play. I know it gets the crowd into it, but at this point you got six minutes left. You need an odd man opportunity where you've been so good on the night. Yeah, but sometimes, Brooks, you just need to drop the gloves and really get after it. Lewis landed a hellacious right there. Big right hand from Lewis, but it's the big, only one that really connected between all of them. Here's JT Walters and Tristan Mock. Those two will get tied up and Mock and Walters have their sticks tied up and now Parker skates away with it in neutral ice. Parker trying to sidestep around one man, gets taken down. No call gonna be there, that play's legal. The crowd will have to complain about that one, but 5.30 left to go as those guys will watch five of the final six minutes from the penalty box as the fighting announcement is made over the intercom. Yeah, whenever there's a call like that, Brooks, you always got 5,000 fans in the stands who think they know the rules better than the ones on the ice. But I hate to tell you, the guys on the ice who know the rules 10 times out of 10 better than the guys in the stands. Face off one by Boussel. Boylar would just one poke it right back to a centerman as Jurich tries to get it out of his own zone. Her have to work backwards and go to Boylar. Deep pass for Boussel, and it looked like Boussel had maybe caught a dry spot of ice. Wrist shot put on by Ruiz is easily detected by McVeigh. 504 left to go, and it'll be an offensive zone faceoff coming up once again for Danbury. Yeah, Brooks, it, it is unfortunate Boussel catches an F there. He can't really just power through it. Turns into a turnoff, turnover, and then the Black Bears ended up with their faceoff in front of their own goal. Never where you want to be. Next Black Bears home game will be Friday, December 2nd. For Girl Scout night, also trivia night, where I have Larry from Tom and Marty's doing trivia during the game for fans around the concourse in their seats, wherever you can find them. It's going to be a big hit as our friend Julia put together a great trivia night. 
the first of its kind for the Black Bears as Binghamton will ice this puck all the way around behind the goal line and the boards. 4.40 left to go. We'll tell you all about the upcoming schedule and more. We got a couple more minutes left to go in this one. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox 14.30. Welcome back to the action here on Fox 1430. Brooks Hill and Alex Jones here as we go down the stretch. Danbury finds themselves up by three as Binghamton and Danbury cannot get on the board just quite yet here in the final frame. Yeah, it is one of those things where you wish Binghamton would come back with more of a Showing they've had some chance in the offensive zone, just haven't had, unfortunately, been able to get anything going on that end of the ice. That puck gets deflected out of play by a Binghamton stick off of a shot. Binghamton would be allowed to change if they wanted to, but they're going to seem to keep all five guys still out on the ice. Danbury wins another offensive zone faceoff, and skating with it is Kuznetsov. Throws a wrist shot that McVeigh let bounce off his chest back out in front. Haida does a good job of indirecting back to Boylar. They're trying to find Kirkby, who was camped out at the blue line. And instead, Binghamton turns it over right at center ice. Now Kuznetsov throwing it, but Haida does a great job blocking one, but two shots. And a booming slap shot put on by Gesso. As great the Black job Bears there yep. for Haida trying to come over and clear that third one, trying to really play in his body on the line here in the third period. I've been really impressed with him so far, Brooks. Haida playing in his first home game for the Black Bears, only the second home game or second game of the season for Haida. You could tell he had his first name Jitters, the first game Jitters, um, last time against Delaware last Friday night. And you know, you do you practice with the team, things like that, and then you know your number doesn't get called until Friday night after being you know available, trying to chomp at the bit, get into the game and. You could tell that like the passes, the shots were a little soft, fumbling over the puck a little bit, but a really bounce back night for Haida, who's played a very sound, physically defensive game, somebody that you want from a stay-at-home defenseman. Tip on the way through, it looked like Mock got a piece of it, pushed it wide of the net, Marshan plays it down with the hand, and he will just up it off the high glass to himself, but Jake Schultz will be the first man there. Schultz throws it into center ice now, one touch for Ivashkin. Ivoshkin skates around trying to get at some dangerous bones. And Ivoshkin has his shot blocked on the way through. Second attempt blocked by Wilson. And now Colin Fitzgerald pinches down. Two Black Bears below the goal line. Pass available in the spot. Schultz a wrist shot. Might have gotten a toe to it is Brian Wilson, the goalie. And a wrist shot put on by Fitzgerald. And Wilson will have to cover up. Yeah, Heidison, and just going back to that, Brooke, Heidison a great job also on the offensive end. He has really been a pillar in that top defensive zone, not allowing the puck to get out of there, fighting, making sure Danbury has to fight for every inch as they try to clear the zone. During that quick timeout, I saw McVeigh make a glance over to the bench about if they do want to pull the goaltender with 3.11 left to go here in this one. It'll be Zach Pemele on. Haven't heard much of him tonight like we did last week, or excuse me, last time a month ago out in Danbury. But now a heavy hit by Thompson as Thompson takes his frustration out on mostly Pexi Glass, maybe collecting on a little bit of the hit. Trying to find Ivoshkin at the blue line, but it hops over Ivoshkin's stick. 2.45 left to go. McVeigh staying put in the net. This would be icing against Danbury, and in fact it is. Or see if the Black Bears like to use a timeout or even try to get the extra attacker out. Yeah, with 2.42, Brooks, conventional wisdom tells you you're probably not pulling down three with 2.42. You're going to look, if you're going to do that, you're going to go a little bit earlier. Probably with little under two minutes left, pull that keeper. 2.42 is just a lot of time to have that empty cage open. Keep it here after the game for the La Quinta Inn and Suites postgame show. We're having Binghamton Hockey Booster Club highlights, the cryoworks play of the game. 
and the Budweiser three stars and take a peek at the out-of-town scoreboard. Don't forget to stay with us here for the La Quinta Inn and Suites post-game show. And it does, in fact, look like Binghamton will call their timeout with 2.42 left to go. Yeah, Brooks, this is when you gather yourself, talk over strategy, get their legs back, get the oxygen back underneath you, and see what they're going to do on this offensive zone. Maybe they'll pull the keeper, maybe McVeigh will come out early. But you really want to talk over your strategy. If you can get this to 5-3 three, three with, with more than two minutes left, that puts you in a good opportunity. As I've said multiple times on this broadcast, a two-goal lead is the deadliest lead in hockey. So let's see if the Blackbirds can make some sort of pushback. 2.42 left to go. That's my partner, Alex Jones. The day before Thanksgiving, a lot of people making their way back into the southern tier for the holiday weekend. The Black Bears will be headed out of town tomorrow morning as they start to make their way over to Michigan for a weekend showdown against the Port Huron Prowlers. Looks like McVay is gone, and Ivashkin's going to be the extra man. And Looks now... Looks like Danbury's going to take the timeout. All right, so both teams calling their timeout with 2.42 left to go here in the period and now with the extra attacker out Danbury has a shot at the open net but with no power play they would be guilty of icing if they shoot it behind the red line you know, you take a look at how the empty net situations have been going for teams not only at this level but at the national level two nights ago the Carolina Hurricanes were able to come back and score three goals in the final five minutes, all in six on five situation. They pulled a goaltender with five minutes left to go, and they got, they scored a goal, and then for a minute the goalie would come back, they go down, pull the goalie, and they would do that three times and tie the game with 30 seconds left to go. Brooks, so I'm wondering too, this is a little bit of um, gamesmanship, if it were, from Danbury. In case they win this puck and ice it down to the other side, they're making sure their legs are not are the freshest they possibly can be. Very late timeout from Danbury that you see often in hockey. So after that timeout, McVeigh actually is about halfway between the bench and the net. Ivoshkin's at the board, ready to hop over. A broken stick now, a great opportunity for the Black Bears if they can capitalize. Here comes the extra attacker and Ivoshkin. A new player coming out for Danbury as well as Luke Richards comes out in front, centering pass in the blue paint, but nobody home for Binghamton. Kirkby gets it down low and shot all the way down the ice into the empty net. And it looks like Zach Pemeleon cashes in for what would be his second goal of the year. And that's the nail in the coffin here on Thanksgiving Eve for the Danbury hat tricks. Oh, we got a little fan interaction here. Uh, so Brooks, one of these things, in that situation, you really gotta have those guys guard the net like that. That's just a great shot by Pemeleon, getting that puck down there throwing it all the way down the ice and really getting after it. Uh, it just one of those uh, opportunities that you have to do when you're on the uh, man, disadvantaged man-wise, that you really have to be aware of if you are if you are uh, Danbury in that situation. They get the empty nether, they don't ice it, they don't bury it, in the, they don't bury it wide in the cage. And if you're the Black Bears, you need to take solace from this. You need to work on those uh, men working down the boards, getting attacking on the wing. Take a lot away from this game. There's a lot you can learn. This is one of the best teams in the Federal Hockey League in Danbury. And it's literally one of those times where it is as, uh, you know, iron sharpens iron brook. This is going to be something that the Black Bears learn from. 221 left to go here. Danbury up by four, and they will remain undefeated in regulation time this year. They are improved to 10-0-1, and, and they will be in first place in the Empire Division when they get back on the bus tonight. Back to the game as Luke Richards will try to steer it in at the blue line. Boylar trying to shovel it out. Boylar will push it outside to neutral ice. And there's two minutes left to go here in this one. Danbury up by four as tempers flare. Danbury shoots it into the Binghamton bench off of the curve glass. That's an automatic stoppage, even though it bounced back into play. I also think that, uh, unfortunately, because the uh, 
the uh, uh, officials are part of the game, just like a curve board or a weird part that's sticking out. I think that jumped off the linesman into the curve glass. Just part of the game we saw earlier when Binghamton was out on a rush, got caught on the linesman skate, unfortunately. Binghamton wins the faceoff, and Boylar will get across the red line and just dump it in. Austin Thompson tries to steal it away from the goaltender. Brett Parker gives his man a rough ride. And now we'll see how the final minute 45 of this game pans out. The decision in the game has already been made. And we'll see if cooler heads can prevail or if we're just going to let the guys go at it. Here comes Ivoshkin skating across neutral ice, and I could get a sense and a feeling that Tristan Mock was going for the hit and a double team from Danbury. And remember, this is about the same time that Gavin Yates was taken out of the game when Danbury was up by four goals last time as well. And now it looks like Lugo and Parker get tied up with each other. They get separated on their own accord. And now Haida throws it off. Look out for the Black Bears. Could be too many men as Parker didn't know the puck was coming his way. One minute left to go here on a Wednesday night. This is the first midweek tilt of the season for the Black Bears as Kirby tries to take a run at somebody. Fitzgerald now does a good job of stick handling at his own blue line, gives it up for Kirkby. It's on sides, giving it up for Boussel. Boussel centering pass out in front in the blue paint. It's gonna be washed away by the Danbury defense as Abdullah skates out to neutralize with it. Dumped away by Shahan. No icing against Danbury. McVeigh once again calling for it. And now Jurich tries to find it in front of his own locker room door. It's Colin Fitzgerald now who will skate away from harm's way. And now Kirkby just dumps it in, gets no further than the line. Kirkby throws his man down to the ice. Schultz can't keep it in at the blue line. Binghamton will be forced to tag up one final time. Jurich gives it up for Boussel. Boussel with a good display of stick handling, trying to get back to the forehand for a right-handed shot. And it looks like Danbury will be content to skate out of this one. Final count, Danbury six, Binghamton two. And Danbury comes in and scores the only goal in the period. And it's an empty net goal. Won't go against Riley McVeigh. The crowd letting Danbury hear about it on the way out of the door tonight, but the hat tricks will get the last laugh as they win six to two. Don't go anywhere, folks. We have the Laquita Inn and Suites postgame show coming up right after these messages. You've been listening to Black Bears Hockey. Hat tricks are the winners tonight. Final count, 6-2 to two on Fox Sports 1430. Yeah, one break during the post game. makes freaky fast, freaky fresh. Sandwiches near you using only the freshest ingredients. Stop by and order delivery or pick up from our location right here in Vestal for a tasty sandwich today. Whether you're in store or in the delivery zone, we we'll always make you a tasty sandwich. Jimmy John's on the Vestal Parkway, you can reach them at their phone number 607-304-2380 today. Jimmy John's, freaky fast gourmet sandwiches. Ray Mariotti here for eBay Motors. So you have to drive 300 miles to your cousin's wedding. Oh, 